Oh, hello there. I almost didn't see you come in. <laughs> Welcome to the George Lucas talk show. Who here has been to a live TV show taping before? Anyone? I got any TV heads in the house tonight? Who likes TV? Come on. Okay, let me phrase it differently. Who likes 10 hour movies? Right? That's what all TV is now. It's 10 hour movies. And it feels like once a week here, we somehow slip into doing 10 hours worth of content. We thought, oh, let's scale things back to some normal shows. Well, Normal is a pretty loose world. Word in the world of the George Lucas talk show. See, things are so abnormal that I swap the words world and word. Okay, folks, look, we got a hot show tonight. We got a hot show. We got a guest so nice, they named him twice. In that he has two names a first name and a last name but we got the guest so nice we booked him once and booked no other guests because who needs them we got the best in the biz and we got george lucas the most successful comedy writer of all time here to use his charisma and his personality to drive stirring conversation with other artists to try to cross the divide and find the commonalities that link us all as human beings. I mean, I should say link him and his guests with human beings because I am not a human being. I am CGI, I'm a Toydarian, and I'm a Jew. That's a little joke. That's a little joke. That's a little joke. Not very funny these days. Not very funny. Not very funny. Watto's kind of a uh, little touchy these days. I don't mean I feel touchy. I mean um, Watto's existence feels a little touchy at a time where anti-Semitism is running rampant. Anyway, let's get ready for the show. Now, folks, we used to do this show live, but then the Trump flu happened. So now... We need to do it online in the way we can replicate the energy that comes from a crowd going, woo, yes, ha, 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 woo, 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 is through hashtags. But you want this show going viral, baby. So let's see some of these hashtags we got this week. Just a couple of hashtags. Clerk Skywalker. I guess you got to slur it together. Like Clerk Skywalker. That kind of works. Mall Womp Rats. That's a little smoother. THX 11. Three, Amy. That's just putting Amy at the end of THX. Dog Mandalorian. Okay, that's a good one. That's clean. Ray and Silent BB-8 Strike Back. Sort of a double beat there. Generso Girl. That's almost, uh, it works. So that's, those are a hashtag. Oh, okay. Apparently there's a second page of hashtag. Clerks. 2D2. It's Clerks 2D2, but with Roman numerals 2 and then D and then 2. That's sweaty. Han and Chewie make a porno. Okay. I'll be progressive. I'll, I'll say nothing about that one. Uh, cop Pain E Out. Sure, if that makes you happy. Red State Tales. There we go. Back in the pocket. Tuscan Raiders. Yes, another one, clean, and we're done with the hashtags. Let's, oh, no, there's one more page of hashtags. Hashtag Yoda hosers. Okay, here we go. Let's end strong. Ray and Silent TV8, Rebo, Rebo, Oot, Snoochie, Babu. Gee, let's just start the show.
filmmaker, George Lucas. Hello, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. Welcome to the George Lucas Talk Show. Uh, Watto? I'm not the blind face. Uh, Watto, I do, I do want to say we did a, we did a hashtag for all of Kevin's movies. There's, there's something yeah. about that that's, uh, we went through there. I, I, I do want to say that uh, I want to, I want to go to bat for hashtag thx one one three Amy. Piss me on it, hashtag. baby. Okay. Do well, you want to explain why you think it works? It merges thx one one three eight with chasing Amy. thx one one three Amy. I mean, it merges the two in the same way that two cars merge when they crash into each other. And both of them, I mean, I want to make it clear, both of them luxury cars. Yes. I have only defined these things to say about them separately. I do not think it is a very smooth merge. Well, I think you have to say it right. You stumbled on it, Wano. Give me a line reading. THX113 Amy. Faster and more intense. But I, thirty a me is that the idea that it it's almost yeah. a homonym? The word eight starts with the sound a, which is the same sound that starts Amy. Right, but it's spelled with an e. Amy. <laughs> Amy is spelled with an a. Eight is spelled with an e. <coughs> I'm saying maybe it should have been t h x eleven thirty eight. Well, I don't ever say eleven. Eleven thirty eight me. You know what I'm Got saying? It. You go THX eleven thirty eight lowercase M Y. Why do if, if you say eleven thirty eight one more time, that's when this show will go till tonight. Uh, then I will shut up. Hi George. Hi Watto. How are you? Hello, Hello Patrick. Welcome we're doing all great. Uh Patrick, we were litigating some of the hashtags. You joined us just in time. I think we only have eighteen more to go through. So yeah. here are the rest of my No, Watto, let's worry about this later. We got it. Later. We got let's let's bring the guest in. We got a really good we guest. We got a hot show tonight. We have a hot show yeah. tonight, Patrick. Patrick. We have a hot show tonight. Patrick, yeah. I don't know if you know this because you've been busy sleeping, but we got yeah. a hot show tonight. That's that's yeah. No, I can. I've heard that. I'm really. I'm excited. George, do you want to introduce our guest? Wada, what are you doing? What do you mean? What am I doing? I'm eating chicken fingers. What do you? What do we, okay. What the fuck does it look like I'm doing? Okay. What, you, you like eating chicken fingers without cramps? What are you, some kind of maniac? I thought you liked snacking. I do, I do. No, I'm glad. It looks like you're happy, and that's all that matters. All right, I'm having George. a great time. I've never felt more alive. Ask had cramps. All right. Well, with that, I think it's time to go ahead and bring in our guest for tonight, our only guest. It's very yeah. rare that we've never had a show with a single guest. But tonight, no. it's, it's a rare opportunity to talk. The great filmmaker, Kevin Smith. Kevin, are you there? Kevin, how are you? I'm I'm very good. How are you, Kevin? It's okay. a real it's a real honor, man, and Watto as well. The the oh. the, the boy laborer fan, the guy who makes the boys work. Please um, let's call me what I am, a slave owner. Fair enough. I didn't want to I didn't want to start throwing on the S word, Mr. Lucas. This is huge for me. I remember when. That those kids years ago made that uh, George Lucas and Love fan film. That's right. Yeah. And you reached out to them and you wrote them a letter. Right. And you were really kind. And this was after I had mentioned your shit in like every movie of my <laughs> movies. And you every, never yeah. reached out to me, never uh, wrote me a letter. I'm and still. We haven't, in fact, ever met in real life until this moment. I, I'm still working on the letter. Uh, the I, I've been working on the letter, in truth, a lot of this time, because the, the, the kids, you know, with all due respect to the kids who made George Lucas in Love, that was it was a small project. You have built an entire universe in which you have folded in the event references, allusions, hom homages to to uh, uh, Star Wars so many times that to list them would take us through the entire evening. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. I'm trying mm -hmm. to clock the universe that Kevin has built. But my view is a skill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We'll, we, we will we'll deal with you in a minute. Back yeah. to my <laughs> show. So yeah. what, yes. what is taking you so long 
well, to write a letter. Did you not think Clerks was going to stick around? It's got staying power, George. Yes, no, the, the second I saw Clerks, I started. I'll read you the beginning. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll read you the beginning. I'll read, I don't want to give away too much letter. There's into comedy. That's worth an email, a text. Right. I, no, I want it to be. I want it to no, be. No, no. George Lucas and Love get your full attention, man. I never thought to make a short film about how you got blown in college. No, <laughs> I just referenced your greatest works. Yeah. In my greatest works, and I I hoped for years you'd reach out. One time we saw each other. We looked at each other across the room. Yeah, I, I was at Skywalker it. Ranch. I thought I can't. I'm not done with the letter. I'm not done with the letter. I can't. I can't. I don't want to ruin it. I'm going to say because what I was worried when I saw you. I remember I saw you. I thought I'm just going to say everything that I've written in the letter. You know when you leave uh, an answer, a voicemail for someone, and then you. You talk to them in person before they've heard the message, and you repeat yeah. everything, and it's very embarrassing. Yeah. I don't want this letter, Kevin. You know, I only just finished episode four of Star Wars last year. I finally wrote the final word to finish that movie. Look, I appreciate that, and I thank you for a happy childhood. But I've been doing this shit twenty six years, and this yeah. is the first time you've acknowledged me in real life. You did drop reference. To my work once on a commentary track yep. where you said, so this answers the Jay and Silent Bob's question, which was inaccurate because they never asked the question. <laughs> Dante and Randall did. Yeah. So you quasi know about me, but yeah. the George Lucas and Love guy, that's your buddy. When you put it like that, it almost feels very pointed. Thank you, Watto. <laughs> the problem is you read And that's coming from a guy with no sensitivities. He okay. has a boy slave yes. who works for him. So yeah. Yeah. I I I want to apologize to you for how long it's taking me. But in in my defense, each time I think I've got the letter exactly right, you put out another movie and it has another Star Wars reference in it, at least one. And I think, well, now I gotta go, I gotta make sure this letter makes sense. This <laughs> letter that I'm writing to you, I, I don't want to make a suggestion, sir. Yeah. Have Dave Filoni write me the letter. No, no, I won't. I wouldn't do that to you. I'm going to give you. This has got to yeah. be for me. Look, he 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 respects you, and he picks up your work and he treats it He's with great. reverence. Hey. So let him finish the letter. That way, the story I could tell at Q and A's and everywhere I go would be like, you know, I finally got that letter from George Lucas. You win. Yeah. George, the dude works so much. Dave Filoni works so much. He can crank yeah. it out like that. You're you're yeah. slower. You're getting older. You're tired. We get it. I also, I'm on the message boards, George, and I see a lot of fans saying that they think Dave Filoni might be in a better position to express what you actually would like to say. No, like, no, no. Like, you have to know how I the cannot, to Kevin, say it better than you could. Kevin, I'm so... I never sorry. say this, ever, but listen to the forced child laborer. That... <laughs> Yes. It makes a lot of sense. Kevin, <laughs> if you knew the countless afternoons that I've spent at the nearest Chili's to Skywalker Ranch, just slaving away on drafts of this letter. This guy loves Chili's. Is this George Lucas or George yes. R.R. R. Martin? How long well, can it take hey, to well, write something? George, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a R. R. it's a touchy subject because a few weeks, George R.R. R. is actually staying here. He's, working, he's hard at work on, on uh, Winds of Winter. He's uh, right off camera. He's been known to sometimes appear on this show, but he's right I, off camera right now. I, I, doubt he'll kill, I doubt he'll make an appearance tonight, but he could, because every now and then he needs to take a break from writing. Throw, throw the letter you're supposed to write me on his desk, mm -hmm. then you're covered. Then I'll never get it, and we'll all be okay. HBO will get to the series version of my letter before right. they'll finish it. Or Roy Rogers Martin gets to it. That's another good idea, George. All you have to do is hand Benny off and Weiss the opening line of your letter, and they'll finish it for you and and turn a pretty tidy profit on it as well. George, I, just, just read what you have. Read I'll what read you have. Bit. I'll read. I'll give you a taste. I'll give you a taste, and then I'll talk. And then I'll tell you about the. I'll tell you the how it starts, and the most recent. Uh, and I'll tell you what the most recent thing that I've been sort of uh, um, bumping on here. So this is like. It doesn't start with a preamble about taxation routes, does it? No, no, I, no. This is its own. This is its own universe. You know, right. uh, I wrote Star Wars for boys. I wrote Strange Magic for girls, and I wrote this letter just for you. Thanks. 
Dear I can I can tell you, Kevin. I've been reading drafts of this letter for decades now. Originally, it was supposed to start with all the tax stuff, and then he was right. like, "Let's start to like forty percent through the story, yeah. like cut to the good stuff, and then later I'll get back around to the tax stuff in the post." And, and you, know, like, I, you know, Watto is to you what I was to Ben Affleck for years: the friend who tells you way too much information right. yeah. about his much more famous friend. Right. Yeah. And, and Watto, and, I say this with love. One day you may not get a phone call for like a decade. So hey, it's happened before; it will happen again. Okay, but then, but then Watto gets a really pivotal, nice scene in the latest movie, and it, it all works out in the end. That's, That's true. You for. might get a yeah. call years from now. Maybe you guys yeah. move your fences, and yeah. then Watto, you know, has this fucking reinvention scene where people are like, he wasn't an anti-Semitic child laborer. Uh, forced uh, labor. Well, no, I don't. I don't feel the need to change that perspective. But I've written a script called Tatooine Boy that's about my relationship with my slave, which I would love to do. I think it'd be a nice change of pace. But anyway, George, on with the letter. It's good George, because there's the, the, sequel, the obvious sequel, Tatooine Man. You know, yes. like uh, yes. how Call Me by Your Name has a sequel yes. coming. So yes. Tatooine yes. Boy could yes. have a follow-up. Absolutely. George, your George. letter. Yeah, yeah, you've been working uh, right. long. It's so good. No, Just read uh, it. The letter, the letter uh, doesn't start at the beginning. Uh, later on, I'll I'll flash back to writing about. <laughs> okay, here we go. We all remain. All of us here, and especially me, are fans. So I'm sure you're gonna uh, radio land murder it. Here, I'm gonna pull Wado and I off camera right now, just so it can be just you and Kevin, and you can talk directly to him. Dear Kevin, uh, big Good fan, time. big fan. Thank you. Uh, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. And I've been working on this letter for quite some time. I just uh, saw Jersey Girl. And I wanted to say how much I appreciated the fact that you, you, began, you began the film with such a poignant homage to the end of episode three. Uh, Padme's death. Um, I don't know yeah. whether anyone else got that that was a Star Wars reference, but I love the fact that you are basically taking uh, um, an unexplored aspect of the saga and expanding it for your own uh, your own universe, uh, uh, or should I say, uh, a skewniverse. Uh, ha ha! I typed ha ha. The, you know what the skewniverse is. Of course I know, Kevin, of course I know what the ISK universe is. I've been following you since Clerks. I know which movies are part of it. I know which ones aren't. I know that there are, there are, I know that, I know that Jersey Girl is not supposed to be part of it, but I know that there are areas and there are gray areas. I know about the True North trilogy. That I, means so much. You are world building, Kevin. We are storytellers. Oh, I thought I was like a little Lucas. You are like a little Lucas. You and I are like two gazelles noticing each other and recognizing that that we are the same. We're Todd Todds. We're storytellers, Kevin. Kevin, Tom -tons. We're, Tom -tons. Story -tons. We're, we're Tom Tons, Kevin. We're storytellers. We're Tom Tons. If if you ever needed to cut me open and get inside of me, uh, I I would be there for you. And if and I would hope the same. If I would ever need to cut you open and be inside of you, uh, that. I knew that's not a thing that Tauntauns do to each other, but you understand the metaphor I'm going for here, yes? It's something a person would do to a Tauntaun. Kevin? One time I met Dave Filoni, and he explained the prequels to me, so I might need him to come explain that analogy, the metaphor. But You said we were Tauntauns. <laughs> I was so moved by that expression that we're Tauntauns. Story time. Uh, Storytelling Tauntauns. We, we go where we're needed, and we do what we must, and we're there to serve to serve the story. Can and the, I, Clark, and the, story, the story of this letter is not over, Kevin. I know, but can you... I, uh, just, I, just, finished, I just finished writing a page about the Yoga Fett reference in Yoga Hosers. Whoa, that's deep cuts right there. It's not deep to me, unless... And, unless uh, because, of course, the first cut is the deepest. And that, <laughs> yeah. would, be, and that would be Clerks. But it's, yeah. a pretty, but it's a pretty deep one. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Lucas? anything at all, Kevin. So they, um, 
you know, they make these uh, the sequels uh, yeah. Yeah. and stuff, and everyone's uh, building on the legacy uh, that that you created. Uh-huh. Why? How come? And I'm not taking anything away from them. J.J. Uh, Abrams, uh, Ryan Johnson, sure. uh, good makers, the good filmmakers, fair and true. Yeah, of course. Why, A, why did neither of them bring back the Tauntauns? B, why did neither of them bring back Watto? Kevin, great minds think alike, because I'm going to tell you something. You, you know, you, I'm sure, because I know you're a fan. You know that my sequel trilogy was going to be about microbiology. You know that, right? Very tiny creatures. Yeah. yeah. A lot. There was a lot of mini clarity. Yeah, there was going to be a lot. Of the wills very tiny. It was going to be about very tiny yeah. creatures. Well, let me. And this is. I haven't told anyone this, but I think you've sensed it. If it had been my sequel trilogy, you would have seen for the first time on screen, tiny tontons. Tiny, tiny tauntauns. Release and the Lucas cut. Release the Lucas cut. Even just, and if you, um, if, you put two, if you put two, two tinies in front of it, that toy sells. Tiny, tiny Release tauntauns. The tiny tauntaun cut. Release the tiny tauntaun cut. Mm. The tauntauns smaller, smaller than uh, the, the the head of a needle. That's how tiny they would have been. And that's what the wheels would ride on, tiny tauntauns. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and then you know the way these companies are we merged were robbed. together. We were, we were robbed. Yeah, uh, my buddy Steve. I thought 2020. Uh, I thought, buddy, I thought buddy, COVID was the worst thing that happened in 2020. But hearing yeah. how close we came to tiny tauntauns, not just tauntauns, tauntauns, not your yeah. fucking tauntauns are fine. Tauntauns, but a tiny tauntaun. Pocket tauntauns. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my buddy Steve years ago, he had pro- he produced the Tiny Tunes. Mm-hmm. Tiny Toon Adventures. I remember the time thinking, oh, I like the way that sounds because there's a T and a T. Tiny Toons. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know what's got more T's in it? Tiny Tauntaun. And I thought, why not throw another tiny in front of that? And I thought, I'm going to put that in my pocket just like you could a tiny Tauntaun. And I'm going to wait sorry. for the time. Yeah. When you say Steve, yeah, mm-hmm. do you mean Steven Spielberg? Yeah, that's my buddy Steve. Oh, my God. He knows Steven Spielberg. I forgot. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And uh, do you ever watch the Tiny Tunes, Kevin? Do you ever watch their, their adventures? Yeah. I did. Uh, I, when I worked at uh, Quick Stop, was in, which was in a movie I made years ago called Clerks. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. When, we, when I made, uh, before I made that movie, I would record Tiny Tune Adventures on a little uh, uh, rabbit ear television with a VCR yeah. that yeah. was set at Quick Stop. I loved that show. Wow. It was an episode, remember, where Steven Spielberg was drawn into it because there were mm-hmm. two little girls that wrote a script yeah. and they won a contest or not even a contest. They wrote a script and sent it in and they turned it into a cartoon, man. And I yeah. said, if those little girls can get a job in this industry, yeah. I get a job in this industry. And then yeah. you didn't, you didn't miss a beat because when it was your turn to make cartoons and you wanted to put a filmmaker in there, let's just roll the clip. Let's show what you did. All right. Hang on. Can we explain to Kevin? We haven't explained to Kevin at all. Oh, well, I'll tell you, we don't have, uh, I don't own anything clip wise. We don't have any rights. So we have, to, anytime we show a clip, we have to distort um, the clip, the audio or the, or the video somehow so that the robots don't, uh, the copyright robots don't uh, take over. George Lucas. George Lucas. State your name in the latest film. Uh, George Lucas, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And do you think Phantom Menace is as good a movie as Empire? Well, certainly. I uh, think it's the best movie I've made yet. Permission to treat this witness as hostile. Mr. Lucas, how do you explain that in Star Wars, Obi-Wan tells Luke that when he met his father, he was a great pilot, but in Menace, he's just a little boy? Uh, well, my, my kids thought. And how come Obi-Wan <laughs> tells Luke that Yoda is the Jedi that trained him, but in the movie, Liam Neeson trains Obi-Wan? Uh, well, the uh, Power of myth. Isn't it true you knew this was a bad movie? That you wrote it over a weekend but kept telling people it was done for years? Objection, Your Honor. The pod race was pretty cool. (laughs) May I remind the court that Your Honor has never been in a George Lucas movie? And you were age appropriate for the Liam Neeson role. I'm going to allow it. I want my eight bucks back. Get him out of my sight. The defense (laughs) Steven Spielberg. You got me. You spoofed me. You got me right there. 
Now I would never, I would never, I would never have uh, that small an amount of money on. Of course, business. of course, but, we know how, how big we it's know how big your, your star destroyer and your death stars are. Let me can just point out for trivia's sake, um, the voice of George Lucas in that cartoon, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, Paul Dini, creator, oh, wow. co-creator of Harley Quinn. Very good. Wow. Great. That's that's very cool. Who were you? He worked for you yeah. years ago on the Ewoks cartoon, and yeah, yeah. George, you should tell Kevin. You should tell Kevin about the other cartoon that you worked on. You should, oh, Kevin. You might be able to help with this. Uh, I don't want you to think that I've only. You know what? I'll go ahead and say because it might give you a thrill. Help me, Kevin Smith. You're my only hope. Kevin, are you? Kevin. just rushed to my dick. <laughs> you you have been on the forefront, Kevin, of uh, transitioning from the, the traditional Hollywood models to embracing new media and different distribution platforms, right? Podcasts yeah. and uh, uh, forewalling your movies and taking them to VOD and all these things. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and you, we, and you we have, have a TV show that's being held hostage. Now you, let me ask you let me ask, Kevin, let me ask you. You remember when Clerks the animated series uh, was originally produced? Not all of the episodes aired, but some of them aired originally in the in the first uh, uh, incarnation of it, correct? Yes. Uh, out of the six that were made for ABC television, ABC television aired two of them out of sequence and then canceled the show in favor of Drew Carey show reruns. <laughs> uh, and that hurt, didn't it, Kevin? That hurt. Obviously, it wasn't specific enough to hurt, George. Right. Well, how would you feel? You, did you pay for that show? Did you pay for that personally, the production Oh, of it? I paid for it, George. Oh. <laughs> 20 years of anger, confusion, betrayal. Oh. And they'll pay for it, George. They paid for it once on paper, but they're going to pay for it one day, I assure you. What would you say, Kevin, if I came to you and told you that the same organization that did that to your cartoon did something far worse to my cartoon. Are you talking about the, uh, the magicians at ABC, the American Broadcasting Company? Bigger, bigger, Kevin, bigger. think bigger. bigger. Pull back, the pull mouth. back. Not the big D. The mouth! <laughs> Kevin. You're talking about taking on the true empire, George. And Kevin. with all due respect, you're no Luke Skywalker anymore. No, I'm I'm like him after he disappears off that rock. Yeah, you're drinking the titty <laughs> I'm like, milk. I'm worn oh, out. I trust me, he's drinking titty milk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this guy can't put the titty down. <laughs> he has a young child. Anyway, George, go on with your story. Uh, I guess it was roughly a decade ago. I decided to self finance and independently because you know the the prequels are indie movies because i paid for them those are they're they're just like clerks they're, they're they're basically like i took a page from your book and i said you know what i'll make a clerks i'll go ahead and make phantom menace attack of the clones just indie movies yeah you, you get some scratch you make a movie that's the way you do it you put them on your credit cards put them on your max out those you credit cards. Up friends and you said faster more intensity faster more he intensity. maxed out his black card yes so <laughs> Uh, about a decade ago, I decided I wanted to do another Star Wars project, and it was Star Wars, but funny. A little twist. It's a little twist. You make Star Wars very funny. I mm -hmm. self-financed and produced, without a buyer, 39 fully completed episodes of the series Star Wars Detours. I feel like we should tell Kevin, this is real. We want to make sure. This, this is, is not George goofing around, making jokes. This is real. No. This is a real thing. This is as real as the letter that I have been working on for you for decades. It is real. Let's say it's even more it's real. Than that. It's even more real, just so there's no confusion. Right. Yeah. These episodes were part of the package, that, and they include the voices of Billy D. Williams, Ahmed Best. I mean, these these are this is no. We weren't joke. We were we were joking around, but we weren't fooling around. And oh, I remember this. Yeah. Yes. It, it was announced at Comic Con. It was coming soon. And then I had to make a, I had to make a quick deal. I had to make a quick sale. And 
my assumption was I have 39 fully completed hilarious episodes of a Star Wars animated series. Mm -hmm. And Disney's getting ready to buy Star Wars. And I know this is going to be part of the package. And, you know, I didn't even think, Kevin, because what for 100 years, what has the Walt Disney Company uh, done with cartoons? Um, they have released. Someone, they've released. Oh, yeah, released them. They've released them. So it's not like I sold it to to you know H and R Block or some company that doesn't release cartoons. <laughs> that would be foolish. That would be foolish. And I would just if I sold it to Chevron, if I said here take this animated series, they're an oil company. They they don't know what to do with yeah. cartoons. George, George would take the L it. in that. They might, they might program it in the uh, you know when you go to I don't know if you pump your own gas. Oh, I don't, but I know what this is. They put TVs now in the gas pumps. Right, so you right. can sit there and watch it. So you I, could sell it to show. I know, I know what this Kevin, is. we we I, I guess, wish yeah. we wish we could release the show via gas pump right now. Yeah. We wish we had that option. We don't. Because I gave I gave these episodes gratis along with the sale of the entire Lucasfilm uh, library. And mm -hmm. Disney took these 39 episodes and they put them on the shelf. And I understand why they did it because they said these are a little silly and we want to we want to go big. Sons of bitches. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes and yes, little yes, silly, yes, yes. always room for some funny ha ha's in yes. the world of Star Wars, particularly when they come yes. from Mr. Funny Ha Ha himself. Who's yes. funnier than you? Who yes. knows comedy more than you? I have a Pretty bad part of the most successful joke of all time. George Lucas. Yeah. yeah, there is no joke that has made more money at the box office than I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah, highest, highest, highest grossing joke. Highest grossing joke. Highest grossing joke. Find me another joke that's, that's specifically to a creator gross more at the box office than that. You won't do it. You won't find Domestic, it. Domestic, worldwide, not, it, adjusted, it's unadjusted. Yeah. It's not. There's no crying in baseball. Yeah, it's that's, not, in, that's in one. That's in one. Right. one it's yeah. not. Uh, he's a Cinderella boy. It's. Yeah. Not, and and and, and you know there are jokes that have done well. No ticket did well. You used no ticket, and we used we. I stole, we were, I off no ticket. Yeah, good that's joke. a good joke. But and that joke's made a lot of money. But it's no bad feeling about this. I agree. So here's the thing. I understood why they wanted to hold it back because they wanted to. They wanted Force Awakens. They wanted to kill Han Solo. They wanted to kill Luke Skywalker. They wanted to kill all of these people. And have it be very sad. So I'm like, okay, it's not the time to joke. But now. When they have a streaming platform and no new movies on the horizon and there's a pandemic going on and people need to laugh and they have these 39 episodes that they could release tonight with the click of a button and they won't do it and this is this is from a film history point of view this is shocking because collectively this is more hours i produced this show i produced it this is more hours than I directed of live action Star Wars. That's how much of my filmography is being held back in a vault. What, what and it just we, we're having to hang out with do? Song of the South all day long. All day what, long. What can we do? How do we rectify this? Great well, question, Kevin. Great, great question. Yeah. What we tell Makes people to do. Why it's why they should not click the button right now because. Mm -hmm. It, the, everyone's looking for fresh content. This sounds yeah. like the freshest content, dare I say it, in the galaxy. That's yeah. right. Yes. Well, this is what we do, Kevin. <laughs> in commemoration of the 39 episodes that are on the shelf, we tell people to tweet at the 39th minute of every hour at <laughs> Disney Plus. Hashtag May Detours may be with you. May Detours be with you. Has that historically worked? It's it, uh, in the pro process of hopefully eventually working. And Kevin, well, I'll say, Kevin when, uh, when we were here on May 4th doing a marathon, we did get it trending in the U.S. for a little trending. bit. Yeah. It, was it was trending was for trending. a little bit. It was, not, it was not high up on the list, but it was on the list, which is, right. you know, it's something. And Kevin, now, Kevin I, I don't need to tell you, you, rebellions were built on hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, you got a lot of followers. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine how they would stir the digging they would do. I mean, this is bigger than QAnon, this, this cover up. You know what I'm saying? You'd get them going down the right rabbit hole. <coughs> George is choking on his beverage. He's, he's choking on his titty milk. It went down too fast. Um, I, look, I, I, I want to see them. 
Yeah. Oh, we can, we can, Kevin, off stream, we can help you with that. Well, I want off the stream too. Like this. Well, makes that we can't figure out. We can't figure out the legal loophole to show them to anyone. But we can send you a link at the end of the stream. Let's. Well, hold on. Let's think about the legal loophole. Okay. Yeah. Let's think about the legal loophole. What does Mad Magazine do? What have they What have they done all these years, other than not publish anymore? What did they used to do? They used to spoof. So they used to change names, right? So instead of Hand Solo, it was Ham Solo. Right. <laughs> or maybe there's some way we could fold in the episodes so they look like one show. And yes. this is technically the lighter side of. Yeah. Or or what if we have Sergio Argonez just doodle the episodes in the margins of other shows? Sure. So I think you got to look closely. Maybe you've read all the main parts of the episode, then you go back, you, you approach it a second time to, to see if you missed any funny sight gags. And then yeah, each name of the episodes could be funny department names like humor uh, and uh, other <laughs> Yes. <laughs> now, Kevin, uh, speaking of legal loopholes, I want to commend you. I, and this is this is talking about a project that is in process, in development. But I think you have come up with a fantastic legal loophole with your next project, uh, Moose Jaws, which is uh, a version of my buddy Steve's film, Jaws. But by putting the word moose in front of it. I'm and by sorry. Yes? When you say Steve... Steven you Spielberg. Yes. yes. You're so lucky. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. But it's because you're gifted. You're blessed. Yeah. yeah true. God touched your head and said, you are the new Messiah. You will tell us the stories that give us hope, that teach us right from wrong. The new yeah. Lucifer is Darth Vader, but this one shall be redeemed. Okay. <laughs> Preacher. I like to think that God is the one who told him to make Watto. <laughs> he was like, God, George, you got to render Watto. It's did. going to be a gift. I he will did. tell his story. I will tell them of him. I will tell the world that he was real. And people have to know. If I remember scripture, the Lord had said to Lucas, you ain't Squatto without Watto. And then he woke up and... Yeah. That's right. Type it up. Um, may I make a suggestion? Yes. Uh, Moose Jaws uh, is a way to circumvent copyright. And if it works, look for Moose Star Wars next. Uh, <laughs> Moose the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Basically, the legal loopholes, you put Moose in front of anything. Moose Endgame. Moose Avengers Endgame. Yeah. yeah. Put an S there at the end. Is, there is not a, there's not a court in the world that wouldn't throw that case out. Your, your honor, they're stealing from me. No, they're not. This is a moose. This is a moose, Star Wars. Yeah, show me one, uh, your honor. Show me one moose in Star Wars and I will give Can't them it. everything. The only, the, only fran the only franchise you would have trouble with would be the Archie franchise because there is a moose in Archie. So they are, yeah. they anticipated this brilliantly. I need the trouble with the Archie franchise people. Those Riverdale kids are just no, intolerable. So yeah. I, I'm believe me, I'm not I'm not going near that side of Riverdale. And and moose yeah. jaws, it's not just a word. It's it's instead of a shark, it's a moose, yes? Yes, it's jaws, but with a moose instead of a shark. Can I tell you something, Kevin? I was talking to Steve. We were we were zooming. We were on the Zoom. I'm sorry. My buddy Steve. Steve. And Spielberg. And uh, Steve <laughs> says to me, uh, we're, we were talking, I don't remember what we were talking about. We were, we were probably talking about Indiana Jones or something. I was like, hey, what if Indiana did this? Ah, who cares? And, um, and then Steve says, uh, hey, you hear about this uh, Moose Jaws? I said, yeah, I heard about it. He says, I think that sounds pretty good. I'm going to, I'm going to, that guy going to make it soon? I, I said, yeah, I think he's going to make it soon. I mean, the COVID's put things behind, but I said, I know that Jay and Silent Bob aren't in it anymore. And uh, Steve said, oh. And he that said, was so shocking. I covered my, my, my face open mouth with my mm -hmm. hands without <laughs> previously putting hand sanitizer on them. 
Yeah. It was worth it. It was worth it. Worth the risk. It's worth the risk. Yeah. And Steve said, you know what? I'm going to write that guy a letter. I said, make it a good one. Take well, your time. Take your time, Steve. I might get two letters in one don't rush, week. Don't rush it. Yeah, it might. In, yes, in one week. Not a week from now. But it, they might sync up because Steve's a little faster than me. I go, I take my time, you know. Yeah, uh, man, he oh. got to Jurassic Park two faster than you got to the whole sequel saga. <laughs> yeah, it just. You I know. could also mention uh, the the USPS is being defunded rapidly, so yeah, I, okay. the, the arrival date of those letters might be a little uh, fuzzy. You know, that's true. Hey, I didn't, when you sold Star Wars, it left you with a little cash. Maybe you could have bought the United oh. States Post Office, Postal Service. I, you know, I, I, it's all it's all tied up in Edutopia. Let's go to edutopia.org or com. I don't know whether it's org or com even. Uh, it's all the education funding. I'm giving it all to my museum and to the schools. If you listen to a lot of NPR shows, you hear I paid for them, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you, even a billionaire has his limits. Fair enough. But you know, Kevin, there's something I wanted to ask you about because, like, we could go through, we could go through, and and we could talk about the different. Uh, there's 39 episodes of uh, detours. Yeah, Star Wars detours. That's right. 39 episodes. How many? How long are each episode? Is each episode? 22. Uh, a gentleman's 22. A gentleman's 22. A hard 22. Hard, uh, 22. hard 22. 22, yeah. in honor of the year in which we will finally be able to reopen after COVID. Yeah. The, uh, we're not talking about a flaccid 22. This is a hard 22. Hard 22. No, at, at the very hard. least, it's, yeah. it's sort of semi-hard. You know, It'll it's sort of... Better. This is like a second present. round. I've already yes. finished, but I think I could do it again because I'm like 28. It's, yeah. it's camera ready. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's sort of a little chubbed up. Uh, 22, <laughs> and this is what's crazy. 39 produced. I believe there's an additional yeah. 40 scripts also yeah. just on a fucking shelf. What? Yeah. Uh, I just. We're going to give you. Kevin, we're going to give you. Gonna, gonna, make, we can't make you any promises. That many shows without a proper home for him, George. What? Uh, what can what I tell think? you? It's hard to be a billionaire. You lose perspective. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know, it's it another thing people don't usually do: make three Star Wars movies without a proper home for them. But that worked out pretty well for everyone, did it not? Yeah, I think I mean, most correct. most people don't make three Star Wars movies. Period. So George yeah, is always the curve on almost, almost, almost. almost. In fact, no one else has done it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I never, uh, I never thought I'd say this, but I agree with Watto. Right. <laughs> uh, a, a lot of things I've done are things that do not pass that test. The test of things that most people would do. I just, I'm bad at that one. I can't seem to, I can't seem to clear it. Can, but, I, uh, can, we, can we shift the focus real quick? Absolutely, Kevin. Watto, um, yeah. do you remember when Anakin came back? Oh. Like just to remember, yeah. put the hat on. Can we see a recreation of, of that? Yes. Oh, Are you, will you play the role of Anakin? Kevin, would I you mind to say? Line, but I, I, I just was, you know, I'll just say. Yeah, Kevin, 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 Jordan, Kevin, Jordan, Kevin, I will leave. No, no, let me, Kevin, let me give you this, uh, if, if you'll do me the honor, because, uh, you know, we've had years now of people putting their own spin on it. Can you play and write the role of Anakin as you would have written the scene where Anakin comes back uh, to visit Watto in it's episode? Passed. This is for it's Attack of the so bear in mind the movie is a, it's a sweeping romance, but we're not at the romantic part yet. He he's you know he spent a little bit of time with this childhood babysitter, uh, and now they're now they're of age, so they can be in a relationship. So that's in the works. But meanwhile, he's heading back. Uh, he's trying to find his mom, and he meets his former owner. And okay. you can take this anywhere you want. You're not wedded to canon. This can be a Star Wars legend. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Here I am working on some junk. Oh, right, customer. Uh, hello. Uh, who are you? How can I help you? Oh, you don't recognize me? Little Annie? Oh, my God. Where's my mother? Oh, I sold her. Shh, shh. Pew! 
And scene. Wow. Oh my god. Watto tried to shoot Anakin and then Anakin shot Watto? No. Watto, that was Anakin, I can't Anakin believe just flat out can't, shot Watto. No, I can't believe what I just saw. I can't believe what I just saw. Watto pulled a gun out, <laughs> fired twice no, on no, Anakin. No. And I got Anakin him. In self defense, pulls a gun. Watto, I got him. Watto no did not shoot I first. Did. I did. I got you right between the eyes. The Everyone scene. saw it. The scene is perfect, Kevin. The yeah. perfect scene. Of course, Water would try to do that because yeah. he's a bad man. So of course, give up the name it. again, a George. It's happening. This movie is repeating itself. Resist the urge to change the perspective of Watto? who shot who first. All right. All right. We need to do this scene one more time, Watto. You know exactly what this scene needs, right? Yep. Uh -huh. All right. Let's see it. Let's see it again. Let's take. Uh, just give me a Here second we... to get into character. Okay. <clears throat> lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. Okay. It didn't work. Hey. Just young. Oh. Hello? Is it a customer? A hey, customer. Hey, how can I help you? Little Annie? I'm not so little anymore, Dick Nose. Where's my mom? I sold her. <laughs> McClunky. <laughs> McClunky. <laughs> McClunky, motherfucker. Oh, no. <laughs> we should get Kevin Clean saying McClunky just in case we want to change it later on, too. Yeah, right. no, no, let's pick up. Let's just pick up a, a clean, a clean McClunky. McClunky. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. I got to give it to you, George. That's a better version of the scene. It's really scene. Good. Well, you got to wait. Anyone can release a regular edition. You got to wait until it's special. That's true. And that was special. I, I, I tell you what, the biggest regret of my life was that I gave away my regular editions as a young man. I didn't wait until they were special. That's true. I wish I had waited. I wish the older I you got the more you learn how to like a fine wine, it has to mature. Mm. You, you want know. your first edition to be special because you're going to remember that edition for the rest of the life. You don't yeah. want to throw it away in some mm -hmm. driving movie theater, you know? No. True. Um, now, Kevin, there are so many, there are so many um, overt references to um, Star Wars. In particular, you love Star Wars. Let's face it, you love Star Wars. I do. You love I the war. Crowning achievement. Um, which you know, I, I loved uh, Kurosawa, and I, you know, it, this is part of a grand tradition where you you take your influences and the, you, then you um, you turn them into something new, and you use the things that you you love in art to make new art. And I want to point out, I want to point out something. I want to show a sequence from a film of yours that. I do not think has gotten enough credit for being, uh, uh, I want to say, one of the boldest and most innovative and most <clears throat> Lucas-inspired uh, uh, films of the past decade. You can go see the Star Wars movies, and you can see, like, yes, yes, this is uh, the, this is the universe I built. But in some ways, they're 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 not they're they're living in the same place. They're not moving it to a new thing. Uh, uh, George, George, just quickly, uh, write down yes, yes. That's a good name for a character for later. Yes, yes. Yeah, you said yes, yes. But well, I, when you when you said ooh. it, I went, that's a character. Oh, write that he, down. Yeah, yes, yes. And he's like someone's assistant, right? That's exactly. A yes, exactly. I would buy that action figure. I'll write it down. Yes. down. Short right. and tall version, just like Snagglepatooth. <laughs> Kevin, there was a movie of yours that I saw. And then when I watched it, it's it's one of the things that I thought, this is the most George Lucas thing I've seen in a film, and I wish I had thought of it. Because, and are we ready with the clip? Uh, yeah. Patrick, we're ready, okay. Should I say what the clip is before we show it to give people context? Uh, right. I think you could say what movie it's from. All right. I think it's better if you don't. That's my okay. feeling, but right. George, you we'll do you. We'll show the clip. It's obviously been distorted a little bit, maybe. Yeah. I think maybe some backwards music or something. Yeah, but and it's interspersed with some of the areas in which I see the influence. Um, but let's watch it and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Okay. Oh my God! Even supposed to be here today! Ah! Shoot! Oh, 
Kevin, you caught me. You caught me. You caught Kevin? me with my with my my pants down. That's that is the most blatantly Lucas I've ever been. You In made my- a movie. You made a movie. Yoda hosers. Hashtag Yoda hosers. Hashtag Yoda. You made a movie which features a CGI clone army of tiny Nazis. Low fascists. And they are they're Nazis that are. Uh, part bratwurst sausage, so they have a cute name. They're called bratsies. Mm-hmm. I that don't is- know how I ever came up with that idea. I Where does it come from? <laughs> I don't know what creature cantina you were hanging around, where the where the clouds of smoke were were uh, a, a source of inspiration. It's but like that idea like- was just hanging around in the air, and you deeply inhaled it, and then held it for about ten seconds to make sure it really sunk in. Famous. <laughs> I, the more you cough, the more the idea really kind of settles. Permeates. Yeah. Yeah. Famously, I hate Nazis. I'm sure you know this yeah. about me. I, yeah, I, we all do. I hate them. No good. Uh, Don't do it. Bad guys. No good nicks. I make them nah. the bad guys every chance bad I get. Here. Bad on both sides yeah. of the Nazi coin. Yeah. All of it. But you yeah. manage to make them, you make them tiny and cute, but also still still Nazis, so horrible. And killable. Killable is killable. the and name. Killable. 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 Cookable, uh, smashable. This uh, was it was my thought process. Yeah. Um, Quentin Tarantino, another director, he yeah. made a movie in which they killed Hitler yeah. once. once. And I said, what if we killed a bunch <laughs> of little Nazi sausages over and over and over again? If watching it once is faster, satisfying, then Killing Bratsies is tasty and, yeah. and very satisfying. Yeah. Can I ask a question, George, going off topic? Sure. So in Star Wars, I think you'd never get enough credit for this. It's not really so much a question and observation. You don't get enough credit for this, for showing um, where the world was going to go, how trivial people would uh, treat human life in the cantina bar. Right. Um, Han Solo uh depending on I'm not saying who shot who first, but Greedo. Han Solo winds up killing Greedo. Right. Mm-hmm. right. After Greedo shot first. Then as he's leaving the bar, he pitches the bartender a coin, mm-hmm. not okay. like a, a wallet, not a bag of cash. Right. He says sorry for the mess, indicating the the complete right. lack of value. Right. To life on tattooing. Uh, you don't get enough credit for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the most metal moments in movies of all time. Yeah. Now and it, it, it's true. The the value of life on tattooing is so low. I swear to God, you can buy kids for like five, ten dollars. Uh um, I would know. And, and like I, white kids, like good white kids. <laughs> five, ten dollars max. Uh I, I don't you, and I, 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 I so in since Watto was featured in two of the prequels right. before mm-hmm. Star Wars, right. yeah. why couldn't Watto have been in the bar in Star Wars as old Watto? Mm-hmm. Off to I, the top, okay, yeah, no, nurse Ke- the drink where he's like, Kevin, Little Annie, Annie. Great question. Everyone who no. comes near him to give him a drink or like, he's always like, Annie, and I was like, No, I'm just trying to use the bathroom, excuse me. So, Kevin, the, he, great question, damn, great question, his whole life. Yeah. To constantly be any, you know. <laughs> uh, Kevin, you are correct. Uh, Watto is a high functioning alcoholic who spent those years in the cantina. What people don't understand is that specific scene in A New Hope when our heroes go to the bar. Watto yeah. is in the cantina. He's just taking a shit that whole time. He's in, in the bathroom that whole yeah. scene. Yes. Because sometimes, if you know this, when they go into the cantina and you see all the monsters and they're all kind of like, ugh, ugh, ugh. the point of that montage is they're all going like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. Watto, Watto went blotto. Watto's all over that movie though. You just haven't seen it in Smell-O-Vision yet. George, it wouldn't take much 
for a even more super special edition <laughs> to throw in it's still my reference to Watto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, just, uh, cut to those shots of the aliens in the bar, you know, just boy, you don't even have to move their mouths, just throw in, oh, shit, it stinks like Watto shit in here. So at, at least well, people are like, hey, Watto's still around and shit. Yeah. And then yeah. you get to the, you know, the, I know, I don't want to upset you, but when you get to the last Star Wars movie, which won't be the last, but mm -hmm. the last the one they, they just did. Right. Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. As the Empire or the First Order falls, there was a missing shot of how's Watto affected by this? They went back to fucking mm -hmm. Tatooine. Yeah. So instead of some random old lady walking by going, What's your name, dearie? Cordarian. Watto should yep. have been Watto sitting right. there going, Hey, hey, Annie? You know, well, and then he's like, <laughs> No, not Annie, but Skywalker. The credits. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. This is a heartbreaking thing to talk about, and I. I think this might be. Uh, um, I might be violating a, an NDA that I signed, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because because it's the it's the elephant in the room here. You know how projects. You you probably have projects that were in development, and because this is a crazy business, you lose control of it one way or the other, and it ends up. Some you start a project, and someone else ends up finishing it. Have you ever had that experience, Kevin? I, I know you have. It's like waking up one day and you don't even recognize your own project anymore. You're like, Annie? That's yeah. what it's like. I was developing one final Star Wars standalone feature, which would have uh, basically, great minds think alike, and you're, you're, you're talking about now. I was developing uh, a feature film that would, because we tried telling Watto's story. I tried telling it when we first made 4, 5, and 6, and I couldn't find the right, it, it just always, it, it, it bumped because people didn't know you needed to see those prequels before it could really be told. It and, makes sense. and there were see there was I think there was one there was a 20 minute unbroken shot in 3 that was just Watto and we're just like you couldn't lift it like like it, it was all or nothing and it yeah. it was it was its own thing it was great but it just it it, it, it didn't serve the story. And so I kept thinking well we got to make this movie and the movie was as you as you said was, the title of the movie was going to be Annie and it was about Watto's, you know, deterioration as an old man, the guilt that he feels, you know, the 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 the, con the the conscience of a Toydarian. This is what I wanted mm -hmm. to explore. And yeah. well, first we had a treatment, we had a script. Uh, 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 Watto and I went to Sundance. We actually did a. There, I think there are some <coughs> early, early DV scenes of Watto and John C. Riley uh, <laughs> filming uh, filming some of the scenes we were workshopping. I don't know who has them. Are you serious? Are those the ones that Spike Jones was shooting at the at the Sundance uh, um, workshop? I, I might have had I might have had Spike do second unit on it because we were we were really going all in. We were really trying to make this happen. I'm sorry. And and, and, and Spike Jones or Spike Lee? Oh, oh, <laughs> no! I, you are so famous, man. You know yeah. all the directors. Yeah, all the spikes. And I don't want to get into the legal morass of what happened because it's complicated and devastating. But the film that I started out making, I lost control of it. I, then I lost ownership of it. Before I knew it was taken away from me. And by the time it was finally released in 2014, the question mark was gone. Wada was out. Jamie Foxx was in. Rose Byrne it, was in. It took, the, it took the question mark out of the title. So at that yeah. point, it's not Annie. It's yeah. just Annie. It's just and, and, yeah. Yeah. and, and so, it's, so then the way they say the title at that point would be Star Wars colon Annie. <laughs> they got rid of the Star Wars entirely. They got, the Star Wars. they got rid of the Star Wars entirely. And they got rid of the Star Wars and the question mark. Yeah. Yes. So it's just Annie. Would people then, confuse it with Annie? Well, that's the, the they, musical. This, this is how the execs started thinking. They said, "Let's start. Let's add one of the songs." I Sia had written a song for this that Wada was yeah. going to sing. Yeah. Um, Sia had written a song called "Opportunity." It's a gorgeous song. I can't play it on the stream. Uh, on the stream. Can, can I wait, George? Can I perform one of these songs we wrote for this movie? Well, yeah. at, before this is over, Wado, I would love for you to perform the song "Opportunity" by Sia. If there's a karaoke version of it uh, on YouTube, because that was to be. Um, 
<laughs> the devastating emotional finale of this film, which, you know, I, at one point they said, can we add one song from the musical Annie into this? I said, that's going to be confusing to people. And they said, just one song. And I said, right. okay, one song, we try it, but promise me if I don't like it, we'll pull it out. Before I know it, all the Star Wars is gone and they have floated in. Top to bottom. Everything Which else. Which songs from Annie did they put in? Which songs? Oh God, where, where, to begin? where to begin? Easy Street, Hard, Hard Knock Life. Yeah. yeah, and all these fucking references. It's like suddenly Miss Hannigan's in the movie. Davy Warbucks is in the movie. Wait a second. Got this thing Wait looks a second. just like Annie. Did they try to shoehorn in the song that wasn't in the Broadway musical, but they added for the Albert Finney musical, We've Got Annie? Of course. <laughs> I mean, by that point, Kevin, I was so angry. You've never I'm seen I'm crying. I'm so upset. <laughs> Kevin, I don't know if, there, if anyone has footage of me absolutely going apoplectic. I showed up. They had built physical sets. I said, what is going on here? These are practical locations. You're performing the musical yeah. Annie. Watto yeah. is on the cutting room floor. The song I commissioned Sia to write for yeah. the Watto movie. I was literally now, on the cutting room floor on the hard drive. And the hard yeah. drive was like under some papers. And what I was like, fucking load me into the movie. Kevin, what is Watto about? What is his MO? He is an opportunist. The yes. song yeah. Opportunity by Sia. What if you watch the movie Annie, which it's adorable. Yeah. I, I don't want to I don't want to cut it down as a movie. It's oh, a one it's so charming. Both, yeah. both versions, both versions. Yeah. Even the Jamie Foxx one is nice. Taken yeah. taken just as a a version Wait, of George, can I ask, yeah. did they were they repurposing the song so it was like the suns will come out tomorrow. I mean, Watto, Watto, I think you should give a little taste for Kevin. Give a little taste for Kevin. This was, okay, listen, we wrote our own songs for our version of the movie, and it was very different, okay? okay. These were wholly original songs that they then replaced with these old Annie songs. It had nothing to do with our original songs, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Give me one second here. Good lighting. We had some nice lighting up here, right there. Is you yeah, working with the ring light? Is that what that was? <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> um, whose sons will come out tomorrow? That Republic credits that tomorrow. There's two sons. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the droids and the sorrow. Till there's none. And I'm stuck with a day that's bland. Wait, and talk, this part. Talk, yeah, talk yes. this part too. Talk this through, like how when people can't sing, yes, they yes, just yes. talk the lyrics. Yes, absolutely. Talk and I'm this stuck part. with a day. Yes. That's bland. Yes. And sandy. Yes. I ba -ba snout. Ba -ba -ba -bam. Ba -ba -ba -bam. And say. And then instead of bump belting back into the chorus, when you get to and say, then you look up and say, Annie. And say, Annie. Coming to theaters near you. That's pretty you good. You will, That's you the chorus. You will see all 39 episodes of Star Wars Detours on Disney Plus before you see Star Wars Annie in a theater. Now, before well, we move on, on you have from, a question. Yeah. Yeah. Before, before we move on from Rise of Skywalker, uh, Kevin, George never put you in one of his movies, but you're in Rise of Skywalker. It's true. J.J. Uh, Abrams. Uh, right? there, right there. Right? I'm that dude right center screen right there. Look at that. There I am. There's that's me dressed up in a heavy coat with a mask. Was it a, what kind of what kind of mask was it? Was it an yeah. alien mask or like just a face mask? Uh, actually, it was really cool. It had like a um, like a circular design to it, like a mask mm -hmm. that you put over your head, like a helmet with a circular design. And when um, what's his name? Uh, Poe Dameron. Oscar Isaac saw it. He goes, hey, you must be Sphincter Man. And, and 
And I was like, oh, he's talking about my mask. But then I was holding my mask and I realized he was just talking about my face. Uh. You know, in my head, that sounded better. <laughs> you know, Kevin, Patrick just said that I never put you in a Star Wars movie. He's and right. That, and that may be true. You're like that. You're like Ryan Johnson in that way. That may be true from a certain point of view. But that's assuming I don't get my paws back on Star Wars. Mm -hmm. That's assuming that I'm hey, done with Star Wars. You know, it's in the air. We can smell yeah. it. I can, you know, yeah. I can. They're bringing I can. your Star Wars back. That's Mandalorian. It's pure Lucas. They might as well call it the Mandalucasin. And, hey, no. and I and I will admit, I'm done with episode four. That is episode four. I would like to announce is locked. That he movie, finally just locked picture on episode four. Once we once I put McClunky in there, I said that's picture wrap on Star Wars episode four. That gives me a new hope. Yeah, <laughs> that was the idea. That, that's the whole idea. That's why he called it that. But oh my I, God, you're right. You're right. That is. Yes, that's yes. you get brand. it. You get it. It gives everybody a new hope. Finally, they have it. But mm -hmm. I, I have toyed with the idea of of putting you in all of the others because here's the thing. Here's the thing. There are things that I did that you uh, have that power. You can reinsert me in the old ones. Yeah, I yeah. put you in everything because here's the yeah. thing. I've also you've learned from me, but I've also learned from you because when I uh, uh, um. Uh, uh, when I put Walrus Man in the cantina, Papa Banda, uh, when I put him in the cantina, I thought I had made a Walrus Man. Oh, ma'am. And then when I saw when I saw Tusk, I said to myself, now that's how you make a Walrus Man. <laughs> you don't just put I have a giant Walrus Man figure, but it's way up on the shelf. I'd bring it down and show you. The oversized one, not the little one, the one yeah. that the novelty one that you could have sex with, life size walrus man figure. Right. Right. Every child's dream. Yes. Yeah. You can, yeah. You can fight it to the death in your own sadistic basement as Michael Park <laughs> and Tusk. Yeah. Yes. 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 You saw that's, that too? That's what I'm talking about, Kevin. I'm saying when I saw Tusk, I said, I thought I made a walrus man. Boy, was I kidding myself. My there's, wall. There's a tusk shelf up there. Oh, it's oh a bunch boy. of tusk stuff. That's all tusk. Oh. Hey, Kevin, it's almost like we can only see that tusk shelf from an us view. That wasn't part of the universe. The joke doesn't track. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's a high shelf, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's a true north. Uh, uh, oh, right? you brought it right back. That's right. what's. Yeah. That's a gifted storyteller right there. there That's the story. Tell the saga. Hey, can I um, can I hype something that I've been working on? And we yeah. tend to talk a lot about your stuff, which I'm all here for. That's why yeah. you come on I, the George Lucas talk show, not to talk about your own shit, but to talk well, George. No, but usually that's not the case. Usually George never talks about his own yeah. Well, this I'm working on something that, you know, obviously I I it, I've taken some of my Star Wars inspiration from yeah. and storytelling chapter storytelling from. I'm working on <clears throat> for Netflix. I don't know if you remember, George, like toward the end of the first trilogy, around the time you were doing Return of the Jedi, between Empire and Jedi, uh, Mattel released a line of toys called He Man and the Master mm -hmm. yeah. of the Universe. So mm -hmm. uh, they're revitalizing that uh, uh, for Netflix. Mattel and Netflix are releasing this Masters of the Universe animated series. So I've been working on that. And in terms of epic storytelling, you know, it's outside of what I normally do. No dick jokes and stuff. It's it's just it's romantic, like your stuff, right. and set in space and and pew 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 and robots and weird aliens and stuff like. It's right. In your wheelhouse and stuff. Yeah. But we got a killer cast on this thing. Ooh. Amazing cast. Um, we I've, got, heard it's a, I've heard it's a mostly killer cast. That's what I've heard. I've heard there's some exceptions. All killer cast, man. Okay. Mark Nicole playing uh, Skeletor. He's killing it. Lena Hattie Mark. is playing Mark Hamill. Lena Hattie from Game of Thrones is playing Evil Lynn. Um, spoilers. It's right there in the name. She's a bad character, evil Lynn. Um, 
Okay. Then you got Chris Wood playing uh, Prince Adam and He Man. You got Sarah Michelle Geller playing Tila. You okay. got uh, the great Stephen Root Ooh. playing Cringer. Yeah, but, from, Red, from Red State, from, uh, yeah. Many things. From Jersey right, Girl. Right yeah. now, the Emmy is going to go to uh, the cat who plays uh, Orko. This cat, Griffin Newman, just a spellbinding performance. Now, let me just lay it out why, because I'm sure you're like, there's right. a guy who talks and they'll pitch him up and post. No, no, no. Yeah. This kid created a voice for Orko that instantly sounds like and calls Orko to mind. <clears throat> but when they did Orko in the 80s, you know, one of the guys who produced the filmation cartoons uh, he did the voice, and then they pitched it up real high pitch. Oh. Griffin creates the voice on the spot Ooh. from his own vocal cords with no assistance. So should a child meet Griffin in real life and some mm -hmm. adult haphazardly says, this is Orko, mm -hmm. he can literally do Orko's voice for that kid. He's not like, let me bring you to a sound studio and wow. record something and have them pitch it up and then you'll hear Orko, which is something you never want to say to a kid. They'll tell their parents, this strange man's trying to take me to a recording studio and show me his Orko. So this guy, Griffin, can do Orko right there yeah. on the spot without wow. bells and whistles, without somebody technologically aiding his performance. He is, he's the, he's pure Star Wars uh, and this is not meant to insult. Mm -hmm. uh, not Phantom Menace at all. Phantom Menace post-produced, very post-produced. Star yeah. Wars, very tactile and real. Griffin's performance as, as Orko is very tactile and real and heartbreaking. Like you will, you, you, it, I'm telling you, this cat wins awards and stuff. So I got that to look forward to. That comes out next year, man. So between now and then, as long as, you know, I can man manage not to fall into a career pile of shit things are going to work out because that show is turning out good. And I have every reason to thank you because watching the Star Wars movies yeah. taught me how to make, you know, tell a story with otherworldly IP. Mm -hmm. That, that sounds sound now to me like such a profound waste of time and energy. Why wouldn't he just let them change the voice in post? That makes no He's sense. A He's a pro, Watto. You don't get it. Like, yeah. And he he said to you, like, I want to do it myself so that if kids yeah. ask me, I can do the voice. What a weird, ego-driven sort like of thing to, to prove his, to uh, his, yeah, his, that's, his, This is know, that's weird. Like, yeah. Nothing to be mocked. This is to be applauded. That's well, the truth. I don't know. The, the, here's, here's the thing. The danger of it is, uh, I, I applaud it. It's very brave. But when you, yeah. when you start doing a silly voice... At first, you think, "Oh, it's a silly voice I can do," but then, you, then you suddenly find yourself doing it for two hours, three hours, five hours, I know. twelve hours. So you're doing it for such a long time, and then you're complaining to everybody about how you're having to do this. Absolutely. Voice. And I mean, to put that much time into a silly voice for a little flying blue creature—it's just like what a poorly thought out decision that will but, certainly but, end up hurting you a lot in the long run. If you could pull it off though, if, if this guy Griffin pulls it off, then he can do anyone. And I asked him, I said, can you do anyone? And he said, any, <laughs> he doesn't I, need any, anyone. And he anyone? said, any, any, and we didn't get much further in the conversation than that, yeah. but, the thing is, I'm looking over my shoulder on that one. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a philosophical, you know, there's different approaches to filmmaking. Sometimes when I would make a Star Wars, I'd just be like, hey, everybody in the office, put on some capes, go walk around in the parking lot, and we'll film you in front of some green screens, and that'll be Star Wars. And, I, yeah. you know, I've done that before. I'd say, like, hey, you, get over there, say these lines. We'll pitch them up. Yeah. We'll just turn the button. Pitch them up a little. Sounds good to my ears. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah, this is... This is there was more a little more. I'm not taking anything away from what you've done, but there's a little right. more artistry involved here, a little more heart. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm getting at is the performer poured uh, his heart into the performance, and because of that, the character you wish that the character was alive in real life. Kevin, how many films have you mixed at Skywalker Sound? Uh, let me see. The first one was Dogma. Yeah. 
Second one was Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, then Jersey Girl, then Clerks 2, and then the last one I mixed there was Zack and Mary Make a Porno. Yeah. Uh, then there were movies that my friends made that mixed there, but like the ones that I made, I think there were those five. Yeah. I would always be in the hallway listening when you were mixing. <laughs> no. Whenever I could. Whenever I could. GTFO, I no. Yeah. I was too shy. I was too shy. George, to George the I, fuck I, I, <laughs> I, I thought I'm not going to give him an early draft of the letter, and I don't want to talk to him before I finish the letter. So I would just sit in the hallway. Sometimes I would sit down on the floor with my legs crossed and just listen while you were mixing the film. Truly, he talks about this letter so much. Like I wish you knew how often he brought it up. I just why? wish that, like he, like. Well, that's why, why I'm hearing about it now. Like. You know, yeah. 26 years into a career, I could have used this information when I was going through cop out and getting beat up or, or yoga hosers when people are like, he's finished, you know, to be able to pull out this letter Kevin. Unfold it and, and, you know, read it aloud to myself or more importantly, <laughs> to others in a public setting to yeah. prove my worth to them, which would then inflate my own worth for me, my own sense of self-worth only based on how others feel about me. So that letter would have been really useful. I mean, look, I'm all for you being a perfectionist. You want to finish episode four until I'm, I drop dead as you're right. But like mm -hmm. that letter was mine and you've hold out, held on to it for a long time. Well, cause I'm not done with it. So I'm being, I know, I've, been like, writing, I've been writing on it a little bit even <laughs> during this show where I just be like, Oh, that this is something I should mention. I should reference that, that we talked. Do you want to yeah. tell him, you want to tell him what you wrote? Yes. What, tell like him right now. Yeah, tell him right now. Yeah, well, give him a little special edition of the letter. Let's re-release the letter. <laughs> no, I just, I had to update it because I'm like, now I'm going to have to go back to the beginning of this because it sounds stupid. Oh, sure. Now I'm writing. Oh. Right now we're all. You know what this letter is? This letter has become splinter of the mind's eye. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote. Hey, Kevin, just so you know, at this point in the letter, you're a guest on the Georgia's talk show. And, and I was just like, this is sloppy. I've worked so hard to make this letter perfect. And now it's just like an email. But I, <laughs> it's like a journal. I like you yeah. turned the letter into a journal. Are you sure it's not a journal that you've been writing to me all this time and not a letter? No, I want to make sure it's not a, I don't want it to feel like Maybe a journal. Maybe it's like the screw tape letters where, you know, you just, every entry is like, my dear Wormsmith, and and uh, that's letter what you think is a letter, but you're working on a book. You could be making yeah. a book, George. Yeah, George. Uh, I, I, I gotta ask, <laughs> how much of the letter is like you just recounting what happened that day, whether or not it relates to Kevin? Just being like, well, today you felt good. No, yeah, for example, do you list? I mean, I don't mean to be crude or insensitive and untoward, but does the letter include a list of how many times you move your bowels in a day? Because then I don't think. The no. letter has much to do with me anymore, as much as it has to do with keeping track of what you do all the time. Yeah. George, you should write a book to Kevin. That's what you should do. Just write make it a book. book. Make, make it a book to Kevin. Yeah. Make it a book. I I don't. It's you not. Drop an album. Turn it into a hot sixteen, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and no, it's it's fire. Not. Drop fire on everybody. Redefine yourself as like the rapping granny of twenty twenty. <laughs> Nobody's expecting that on their bingo card. No, I, I, if I have ever written, I, I think I did. I had to go to the bathroom once during Red State, and so I think I probably did write about that. Uh, because I think there was, a, and then I went back. I re, I rewatched it because I was like, Kevin Pollock was in this from Willow, and now he's gone. What did I miss? Mm -hmm. I remember when I saw Red State, and I thought, Oh, good, Kevin Pollock from Willow. And I was like, Oh, I really have to go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom. I came back. And I kept waiting. I'm like, what happened to? I remember saying to people, what happened to Kevin Pollock? What happened to Kevin Pollock from Willow? Kevin Pollock Dude. from Willow. And I started, people started getting very distracted. And so I he did was, write about that. He, but was, uh, he was in and out pretty quickly. Yeah, he, yeah. he, 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 he was shot in the face pretty quick in that. Um, <laughs> he George, got the plunky, the real bad. We got some fan art from this episode. Already. Wow. That was fast. So there's one. This is from Ooh. Lauren Damon. Very good. That's Hot. amazing. That's great. Uh, let me bring up the other one. We we actually got a oh, few. Lauren, that's a uh, that's a hell of a piece. It took you less 
time to finish that art than it did for George to write me a letter over 26 years. The letter's it's from coming. Bring the Noise. It's Watto dressed as uh, Silent, Silent Watto. Silent, Silent Watto. Watto. Which, what a show this would be if that was the case. Nobody wants Never going to happen. I'll, yeah. wear, I'll wear the trench coat, but you can't shut me the fuck up. Yeah. And, uh, this is from Andrea Streeter, and it just says God made Watto. We love it. It's very nonspecific sure. to our episode, yeah. but nice. Kevin, at the risk of at the risk of uh, going going down a, a a detour, which heaven oh. knows we wouldn't want to release one of those. Yeah, uh, on the shelf. Yeah, we we used to do this show uh, at the UCB Theater in New York. So every now and then, when we'd be setting up for our show, there would be various performers there, and you know, you're you're cordial with people in a the show before you, the show after you. If you run a little long, you'll sometimes find yourself in conversation. Right. And I found myself making small talk. Um, I, I've never worked, I, George Lucas, I've never worked with Bruce Willis. But I found myself making small talk with uh, a, an improv comedian who had just done a Funny or Die video with Bruce Willis. Um, and, uh, and I believe this was to promote the movie Death Wish. And Which, they, that's what you do with a Death Wish. You promote it with the chuckles at Funny or Die. Funny or Die. And it was one of the, Funny or Death Wish is close. Yeah. I believe it. Was good. They I lean believe more toward the die than the funny in Death Wish. And the, the premise of this video was branded content, basically. The premise of the video was that uh, Bruce Willis had hired a junket double. And so this comedian was playing uh, the interviewer, the journalist. But... Bruce Willis would from when they would occasionally cut and there'd be a, a, a stand in instead of Bruce Willis and the comedian would be thrown by the uh, uh, the presence of someone who wasn't Bruce Willis and it would cut back to Bruce Willis and and he would say wait you weren't you weren't here a second ago and concept. fun it's, it's, concept. A, it's a recipe for fun right there recipe for I fun. Just, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna play it but I'm just gonna show just so he can get an idea of what it looks like really quick Right. So there's Bruce, you know, and there's the interviewer right. uh, who's talking to Bruce. Just just so you get an idea of what that, that guy could really that, use a beard. I think that yeah. captured it. That captured yeah. it. Gotcha. And, uh, and Bruce had broken his arm. And they said... Uh, Patting himself on the back or... <laughs> uh, maybe, ah. uh, maybe jerking everyone around on set. Ooh. That's could be as well. Um, I've the, heard that. <laughs> well, I thought you would appreciate us a, a, a swapping stories from the set. Uh, uh, this comedian was told he's he's broken his arm, so don't like don't go to like jostle his arm or anything. As if that's don't like, do this too much. Don't, hey, don't do, you get don't it? One of these. Don't give him one of those. Right. And, right. So right. they were they were warned, <laughs> and then this uh, so this comedian he. He's waiting. He does all the scenes with the stunt double. And they're like, we only have Bruce for a few minutes. Because okay. this is one of two promotional events that he has agreed to do to promote the movie Death, Death Wish. That's it. Only one of two. Two <laughs> promotional events. One of them is a Funny or Die video in which he is not in most of it. Right. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, Bruce Willis shows up, uh, or so this comedian thinks. And it is like a cut out of a movie where... Uh, what looks like a 200 year old version of Bruce Willis arrives and this comedian thinks, Oh my God, Bruce Willis is dying. And then like a, like a comic, you know how it is where you cut to the thing and it's not that it's this. I don't know if this was his father or what, but there was, there was another Bruce Willis type there that looked like what Bruce will look like maybe a hundred years from now. Right. Um, and then Bruce shows up and everything. And he did, I would say, in this comedian's estimation, it was as as brief as brief a run through of the script as one could possibly do. Sounds in, right. In which he didn't say any of the actual lines that were needed, uh, but fixated on the sport coat that the improviser was wearing and made a lot of let's say half jokes, not jokes. <laughs> let's say half so jokes. Not like uh, of the of the order of like that jokes uh, that jacket's wearing you kind of thing. <laughs> Kevin, you're you're such a talented joke writer that it's it's impossible for you to write as half a joke as <laughs> as would be needed to truly convey how incomplete, how unfulfilled a journey these jokes were. So um, like uh, that jacket is. Yeah, just like what? Where'd you get that jacket? That jacket is. 
where'd you get that jacket? What's with that jacket you're wearing? That's a nice jacket. Not really jokes. Coming close, feeling like they're 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 a, a spaceship. They're, they're like Han in the Falcon in Empire. They're trying to get somewhere. They're locked. Sounds like he was workshopping a jacket joke. A jacket mm -hmm. joke. He was, and mm -hmm. none of the none of what had been shot worked with talking about a jacket. Right. None of what was needed. All that was needed was a just one solid run through of the script. I would also say he whispered all of his lines so quietly that the comedian was later amazed that any microphone could have been could powerful. Pick it up. That's pick true. There's a, bit of a, there's a bit of a high pitched, uh, uh, you know, a dog whistle of a voice. And I don't mean oh. dog whistle in the in political the or way. Yeah. I just mean he registers. Yes. He's so low that he registers at a high pitch that no human can hear. Does that make yeah. sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So low, a Star Wars story. And, <laughs> Uh, anyway, I, I don't recommend you watch the video. It's inconsequential. But I okay. will say that it was a miracle of editing that anything coherent could have been made out of what was filmed. Right. And so, though I have no experience with Bruce Willis, uh, in hearing this story and hearing your stories, I feel a certain, I, I feel almost like a dyad in the force. I feel the power of these stories, that there's, uh, there's something uh, that connects and is powerful and makes me uh, makes me uh, feel sympathy for what you went through, you know. It is, uh, yeah. It's um, well, George. You've been around. I have been around. And the, your comedian uh, friend that you spoke to, he's been around. I mean, a little. Um, you little know, little. it's it, it's very rare when you meet people who just don't want to be where they are in this business. Did not want to be where he was. <laughs> Truly. And I don't mean like, I don't feel like doing this particular singular episode, this exercise, which will take me about 15 minutes if I really fucking lean into it and stuff. Yeah. I just mean this business, you know, around these people, uh, it just, it, it's, it's tough to get anything going creatively when you're met with not a lack of enthusiasm, but the opposite. Yeah of enthusiasm, you know, the yeah. thing that crushes enthusiasm and stuff. So even it's, you know, yeah. disappointing yet at the same time, reassuring to hear that even on a small thing, the smallest of things would have taken yeah. no time whatsoever. At least there's consistency of performance. Yeah. You know and what's funny that about that? Said, that being said, Ryan Johnson, a filmmaker who I'm sure you have some familiarity with, um, I had him on a podcast years ago, and he talked about making Looper with with uh, Bruce Willis. Right, and he said it was a completely different experience. He said that that Bruce was collaborative, there for the work, um, you know, brought ideas to it. He described somebody I never worked with, uh, yeah. Robert Rodriguez. Said, uh, and he's making a, uh, apparently I directed a Mandalorian episode I just read. Mm -hmm. Robert Rodriguez, I talked to him and he goes, Oh man, I heard that you had a bad time. He's going, You got the moon. I've only ever gotten the sun from Bruce. Yeah. So there are people that say that, like, he is a joy, a thing of yeah. joy to behold forever. But some you know, walk by night, some fly by day. By day. <laughs> Something it's sweeter when, when you meet, you meet long the way. way. See, I, I fucked Demi more in the mid 90s. Oh, I mean, great laughing. Not collaborative at all. To the like, why are you in my house? There is the sun, the sun and moon. moon. They sing their own sweet tune. What's the name of the moon? Is it How are you doing? You doing okay? Watering watering we'll walk by and by. We'll walk by and by. The one that got away. Rangers who just met on the way, who just met on the way. That's for Bruce. That one's yeah. for you. Bruce. We pour one out. That's for Bruce. Pour one out. 
we pour one in. Kevin, what is the Star Wars movie you want to make? Yeah, what yeah. Star What's your Star Wars? Or would you rather? Would you I'm rather make? I, I like this stuff, but I'm so not creative enough to come up with a good idea for it. Like yeah. Star Wars are the kinds of movies that I want to walk into and just be entertained. Like I never sit outside of it and go, you know how I would do it? Because I, mm -hmm. I don't. Now, that doesn't oh. mean I can't see shit where I'm like, ew, I don't like that or I wouldn't have done that. Now, Kevin, can I, I can't say, say that I have any better ideas. I'm never like, they should do what I want to do. Those movies yeah. turn me into a, a audience member instead of a storyteller. They, Kevin, they bring me back to my childhood, yes. Can I just say what a shame that is because the world needs more people who think they know best about Star Wars. <laughs> yes. we, just, we just don't have enough people out there who have never made a Star Wars film, but know that there's a right way to do it, and they know the best. I believe I might have triggered something. I'm sorry. I, I forgot that if there's anybody who oh has dealt with Star Wars toxicity, it's the man himself. Oh, my goodness. Boy, oh, boy. The, the one, are, if I had a Star Wars, if I had a dollar. They gave it to you with a double-sided lightsaber. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. if, if I, like if, and yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh it's funny all the fans they keep on saying oh why won't they bring george back why won't george come back hmm, i wonder why george doesn't want to make those movies anymore i yeah. wonder why george literally sold it away you are great for bastard they, they made george sad you can it say made, it now it made me sad made are me you sad. still sad george? are you still sad a little bit, yeah. Okay. A little bit. Okay. I'll tell you what though, Kevin, if 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 it were down to me, I I would have I wouldn't have you do a Star Wars. If I were running Lucasfilm right now, first of all, yeah. you were building your own universe. So I didn't want to distract from that because you were you were already doing it. And mm -hmm. and that's a very delicate thing. But if I was gonna bring you in the into the fold, let's say we were back, we're back in the old days. Mm. Uh the digital Let's do that. Can we be back in the nineties? I have a lot of Back then, early '90s, yeah. the digital yeah. sandbox. Back then, yeah. mid, mid uh, to late '90s, actually, that's a better time. Yeah, the demi year. Yeah. I, I, uh, I want you on a Radioland murder. I'd want you on an American graffiti. I put you. I should have done a third. I should have done even more American graffiti. Yes. A little more. A little, yeah. little, little, little more. A little, little more American graffiti little little special more. edition. Yeah. Um, or a young indie. Like, how would you? I. That's a request. Better yet, even younger Indiana Jones. Oh my God, he was so adorable. Can you imagine a little baby Indy? <laughs> oh. Like Boss Baby, and you saw how well that did. Oh. And what about this guy? What about this little guy here? What about this little guy? Everybody baby? likes them. Look at it once again. Watto can't get away from the kids. Probably going to make <laughs> uh, the little wait. baby work. And, little, and little this baby. guy was a steal. Steal. <laughs> I got him a card for fifteen dollars. They're yeah. all a steal to you when you. Yeah. you Force people to work for no money. You, yeah, you but usually I can't get them at big box retailers. That's why I appreciate this. They made the process much easier. Fair Here's enough. a pitch. Here's a pitch because what if you happened? Have look, look, nobody. I know we're not supposed to. When I agreed to be on the show, they made me sign an NDA. Yeah, yeah. Thank but, you for doing. That. Thank you. Which, thank you. But and and part of it was I wouldn't ask this question, but I I gotta ask it. All right. What did you do with Annie's mom after Annie left? For all that time, why didn't you just let her go with her son? Um, Why'd you split up a family? You got to look at the uh, again. George, I don't wanna... uh, George. Yeah. Let Watto speak for all himself. Right. All right. Why did you do that? What gave you the right to break up a family like that? Little boy and his mom. Mm -hmm. She didn't even know who the dad was. Funny blood, she says. Mm -hmm. You broke up a broken family. Why'd you do that, Watto? Mm -hmm. Then you later, when the boy who you broke returned as a man, the best you could offer was Annie. Well, no, no. First of all, it wasn't like that. It was a little more like this. Annie. Okay, big difference. Big difference. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. It is all. I had a little hat. Yes. Uh, <laughs> wait, I wasn't aware that it was my fault. That Qui Gon Jin beat me in a bet. I wasn't aware that I'm the bad guy. 
because he came in and was like, let's gamble for human lives. I was like, no, I like to keep the complete set. <laughs> he was like, I don't have money. What if we pick? Another like, word point for, off. Another word for set would be special edition. Yes. You yeah. all and you, have, and you have to, I'll direct you to the text because it's the first sign of the true evil that lurks within Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> what do you so mean? We go to the text. It's very subtle. We put it in there, but it's there. Check the text. When young Anakin is told that he is going to be abandoning his mother and flying away from the planet, leaving her there as a slave. Yes. What is the thing that he says? One word. Yippee. 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 Fair enough. This boy, how could they not see it? He's leaving his mother. He's that's saying, a real I'm the bad guy. guy. I'm the bad guy. I'm that's the a bad real, guy. That's a real McClunky right there. A real <laughs> McClunky in the nuts. That's, that's a McClunky. Yeah. Yippee. Oh. Famous yippee. last words. Yippee. Now and look what, look what it got him. All that yippee and look what it got him. You oh. ask me. You ask me, Kevin, what is the prequel trilogy about? It is a story about Watto carefully avoiding a we need to talk about Kevin type situation. <laughs> bad vibes. He's going to end up killing a ton of people. Get him out of here. He did. And let me you try to make a little that. something in the process. You, know what I'm saying? You, you identified it early on. One of these droid making kids alone in his yeah. room making a friend. I went yeah. whole haircut. Oh no, these yeah. guys, you can take them out of a lineup. They always look like this. Man, well, that's a that's uh that is a laser blast dodged, my friend. Mm -hmm. you, you know what? Yeah, you're the hero, Otto. Blast dodged. An ion cannon blast dodged. Yes. Oh boy, uh, Kevin, you're on the uh, talk about that reality show that you're on right now a little. The t is it on TBS? I am. It's on TBS. It's a game yeah. show called um, uh, Celebrity Show Off. When I mm -hmm. joined it, the word celebrity was not in the title. They added that at the last minute. So Great. Um, I don't consider myself a celebrity. So when I saw that title, I was like, Oh no! But yeah. uh, I have loved the contest. Like um, I, they basically the ideas that came from this Korean show format um, where it's called my little television where they give people like a package of you know camera and some lights recording equipment like you have to make a little show um, which is like you know i got a youtube channel so it's no different yeah. some of the other people they chose were like camera you know so everyone was opting to do kind of shows where they look down the barrel and say i'm this person and this is my blah 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 mm -hmm. But I was like, this is going to be on TV, even TBS. I was like, fuck, man, I'm going to make like a sitcom. Like, you know, there is no sitcom shooting in town right now. So my daughter had moved her boyfriend in with us when, when the quarantine began. So I was like, oh, I'll just use that. And we'll do Sun in Lockdown, we called it. And the idea is like, I don't like this kid. And fucking he's stuck in the house with us. And they're little homages to like all the sitcoms I grew up watching. And I honestly thought we'd do it twice and get kicked off. Sure. But we're like one or two episodes away from the from the end of it and shit. So there's a, a wor possible world where I win the celebrity show off title belt, and apparently they're actually making one. And That's I'll, right. wow. oh yeah, I, I want it now and stuff. I think it's going <laughs> to come down to like me and Jason Mraz and and Tori Spelling. I never thought I'd say this, but like, wow, it's the me big version of Hollywood. Big so. Three. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm ready though for the. I mean, she might have the edge because she grew up in very famous TV family, but mm -hmm. TV raised me. I, I grew up with television. I, you know, they nurtured me. I sucked at television's teeth, so I feel like I might be able to take it all the way. But it's been yeah. fun, and we give the money to charity. There's a charity component where they're like, pick a charity, and so we're ours is the National Black Justice Coalition. So every week we stay on the show. They break a check off to, to the National Black Justice Coalition. So you know that to me, when I said like, "All right, I'll do it," I was able to stand behind the charity thing. If anybody was like, "Why are you doing this?" Like I saw yeah. some film fans on like film Twitter from Italy or Spain, and you know how like sometimes somebody will put up a tweet and your name is in it, but it's in a different language. You could click yeah. the translate tweet button. 
So this tweet was like somebody going like, this is what Ke the great Clerks filmmaker is doing now. And then fucking somebody tweeted, oh, how the mighty have fallen and shit. And I was like, what the fuck, man? So, you know, you're not allowed to have any fun. George, you know, like anybody yeah. else, you had, you had to have fun with your pre the prequel trilogy. And Yeah, Patrick, bring up the cafeteria photo. Bring up the what? Oh, yeah, sure. Photo. Yeah, bring up the cafeteria. So which one? You'll see. This is a photo of me eating lunch. I was having a blast. Got wrote about yeah. like I was having a bad time. I was in a food court having some yeah, noodles. It's the happiest I've ever seen George in it my was, entire life. This is a, it was, a, was having a fun time. Someone <laughs> take a picture. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. That's a guy having fun. I truly, I've never seen him that thrilled to be doing anything. I got my noodles. I got my I got my diet cola. I yeah. got my my printed. I don't even remember what newspaper that is. But, I, but, I, I, but I'm like I don't need to read it yet. Just leave it folded on the tray. I'm gonna focus on the noodles first. Have he's, the he's glowing. He's the absolutely glowing. The beverage is there when I need it, but I'm not that thirsty because I'm gonna have to put the the fork down uh, to pick up the drink because this where is I've, very. This is very casual, George, though. You don't usually see, like, the two oh. buttons on gun, George. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, this, I this to, like, yeah. It looks like he's in a mall, yeah, and it looks like he's doing some selling. Yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you what I was doing. I was doing a little bit of Kevin Smith cosplay. I was doing my little version of Mall Rats. Is that what that was? <laughs> That's right. I was. I, 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 can't, I can't go to Comic-Con because I'll get swamped. But I can go to I don't was that on New Zealand Australia I don't even remember where I was. It was Australia. Uh, Australia. Yeah, I was in Australia. And I thought, the only court that's open in the world. For me, for me, <laughs> I thought I can I can do mall rats cosplay without being disturbed. Mm -hmm. If you put a backwards baseball cap on, people would be like, "Hey, it's Silent Bob." Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, the I, uh, I I just made a connection, and I don't know if this is a sensitive. Is it a rainbow connection? I wish. <laughs> there, there is a property that yeah. you and George have both sort of taken cracks at, and both of you had uh, uh, troubled experiences. That's right. You talk about how you didn't want to, you don't want to write the Star Wars, you don't want to write one of those. There is a property that you have also at one point been attached to from the Lucas universe. George, you want to turn around? No, you set it up. Why don't you tell it? No, he's asking no, if saying, you want to turn I'm setting around. it up. You want to physically turn around. Oh, of course. Hold on. Oh, yes, that's right. There was yeah. a moment. Yeah, that's right. I was kind of involved with them. Um, Much like George was kind of involved with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then they booted him, and then 30 years later made like a billion of those things. Yeah. And let's, say, let's say up front, great company. All their employees really love working there, and they have nothing bad to say about it at all. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, first uh, order of business. Um, Howard the Duck, wonderful movie. You were ahead of your time, George. Yeah. Uh, Currently on sale on iTunes. Howard right. the Duck is clearly the uh, first, never mind Captain Marvel, the first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You birthed yeah. two movie universes, George. Star yeah. Wars and the Marvel Cinematic Universe by way of Howard the Duck, which yeah. was too early to be understood properly. The right. pre-Avenger. That's what they should have called it. Howard the Duck, the pre-Avenger. Yes. <laughs> Pre-Avenger. The Prevenger. Kevin, I have a proposal, and I it's all speculative. We're both busy. We both I have my museum I'm working on, obviously giving money to education. You have so many projects you're working on. But let's just put this in the chamber, and we'll have it there. On the other side of COVID, you and I, we make a movie. Yeah. And we call it, and we'll write it together. I mean, I'll, call, I'll tell story ideas, and you'll write it. I don't like to write it. I just like to say it, and other people, that's the way I like it. I feel you. I feel you. What would you what tell me? I'm just gonna say four words and you tell me what you think of this. Okay. Moose Howard the Duck. Of course. Of course, because every duck is a moose. Yeah. <laughs> and the ducks are all that's moose. how we circumvent, like, look, in a world where yeah. Marvel Cinematic Universe is like, we're fine, we don't need you. Yeah, we don't need it. Moose 
Howard the Duck. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You know, it starts on a planet. There's a moose with breasts in the tub. He goes <laughs> crashing through the wall. There's a moose yeah. with a condom. And the lady's yeah. like, am I going to yeah. have sex with this giant sure. moose? Moose Girl magazine. And, and the moose yeah. is named Howard the Duck in the way that, like, yeah. Yeah. Steakhouse is named Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Yeah. It's Howard. It's, it's Moose Howard the Duck, John. Yeah. 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 Human human Jeffrey Jones, though. We're keeping the human Jeffrey Jones. Are we? Is that, okay, never mind. Never mind. Sorry. 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 Yeah. So it might. Yeah. No, Patrick, Patrick. I just, I just wanted to pitch it. I just wanted to, No idea is a bad idea. The Patrick, studio is so scared of that Patrick. idea. They knocked Patrick offline. Yeah, yeah. they said, get out of here. Yeah. I think yeah. Got, yeah. Got, yeah. Hacked. got hacked. Got hacked. Yeah. Um, um, oh, I, I'm, I was. Yeah. Listen up, Power of the Duck is is a brilliant idea, but like you're the king of brilliant ideas. Oh well, you're the prince of them then. <laughs> Which what 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 would that make you to me? That would make that would make you my son, and that would mean that Kevin, I am your father. Oh my God! Oof. I just midi chlorines all over my shorts. <laughs> See, we have different styles, but they complement each other. Lucas in love? No. Smith in love. Oh, my goodness. And that's how an Anakin gets born. Just too many loose midichlorians lying around. That's right. Yes, and then one day you walk in the room and there's a full-grown human there and you're like, Annie? You guys say you have different styles, though, and you are both known, I would say, one of your features is your beards. People love your beards. But yeah. you're both Kevin, you shaved your beard for yoga hosiers. I did. I had to in order to put on prosthetic makeup and whatnot. Now, George, so, uh, I think you've also done this. Should I show the picture? Yeah, let's show the picture. I mean, look at these guys. Oh, wow. Wow. Dad, it's dad. like a boy, a boy and his dad. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. One of and the, when, when, it his, is. Uh, when, when do you think that was when his I beard was shaved? I think that's well, George, I've before. never seen that picture before. Uh, Patrick, if there's a way of showing, because there's actually a reveal if you show the full context yeah. of the George picture. Sure. I will show pretty, the full picture. It's pretty shocking. But right there, what I like is I have a very serious vibe and you have a kind of a sillier vibe. Because I think that's true, even though I do comedy and I'll, and I'll do some things that are silly. Um, I didn't think about, you're right, there is, there is a, a good reveal here. Great here we reveal. go. Look at this. It's on Disney News from spring 1987. Wow. Wow. Oh, no. And look at this. Look at this. George Lucas shares his galaxy. Wow, George. I shared it. I shared it. Be careful. Wow. And hold on. Hold on. And look at the bottom. What does it say on the in the corner there where you zoomed in? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry. Uh, I might be wrong about this. Oh, I thought um, it said... I thought office copy. I, I thought it said office cop. What do we call <laughs> office copy? And I thought, well, that's fascinating. I never did Disney never release office cop. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, there for the taking. They've been marketing it. No one first for since 1987, and nobody's made the project. You know, they remade uh, uh, Point Break just because people knew the title. You yeah, could yeah. totally. Not release office cop because yeah, yeah. it's been in the consciousness since 1987 on that Disney magazine. Yeah. Yeah. Where? George, what's the story? Let's give me the quick elevator pitch. We'll see if Kevin can punch it up or we can punch it up. For office cop? Office. Yeah. It's a yeah. bloody kind of affair, I assume. Yeah. He's not a but here's the thing, he's not a security guard. This office has security guards. <laughs> something different it's something new it's like robocop but instead of him being a robot he's a a new kind of cop but he's he is in of, office he's it, 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 he just his jurisdiction is just this one office building yeah but he is separate from the security yeah he is a cop. but if you get out of that office building he can't he can't leave the office building that's yeah. where his that's where his he's uh his abilities kind of and he clashes with the security guards because they're guards. That's different. They're here to guard. He's a cop. Yeah. He's not solve crimes. You know the uh, way that the Robocop has the helmet that covers the top half of his face? Yeah. 
Maybe Office Cop has a little cubicle over the top <laughs> half of his head. It's his head. It's like he is part office. Yes, part it's office, part, part office, man. part cop. All part. It's, <laughs> it's the reverse yeah. Wilson from Home Improvement. It's just the yes. top is covered. You always see the bottom of that. Yeah. Thing. So but the top is stuck in the cubicle. I can see the tagline now: thirty-three percent office, thirty-three <laughs> percent man. 33% cop. Yeah. All entertaining. And then there's <laughs> like roughly like a percent that we can do. It's just a kind of a round. Well, it's just like how when you're having, when somebody carries a surrogate child, like yeah. a piece of that yeah. person carrying winds up in the DNA of the kid, but it's a small. Yeah. Yeah. Something, yeah. Goes, something goes wrong in the office. It could be an inner office email yeah. that, that it's, there's an attachment Something goes wrong. He was just a, a although who worked in an office, having like like one percent oh. dad at the bottom or something like oh. that. You know, like yeah, something family is yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That might yeah. be the twist, though. Maybe we don't put that on the poster because that's the yeah. end credits. You talk know, about, <laughs> talk about a little twist. Well, not the end credits, but that's third act twist. That's when Ronnie yeah. Cox is like, "You son of a bitch! You can't." Do anything, office cop, without my okay. fucking say so. And then yeah, you, oh, you, you see, fired! and then office cop can do his thing. Yeah. Maybe at one point, like a cubicle gets thrown across the office, and you're like, "What?" And the camera whip pans over, and it's the little boy with the inhaler, and you realize, "Oh, he wasn't James Marsden's son; he was office cop's son the entire time." <laughs> Talk about a little twist. And the universe is yeah. because that is, that is such a like that twist never got enough respect. Are you literally crying? Well, <laughs> yes, I'm I'm emotional about finally somebody is giving that <laughs> fucking plot twist respect, putting respect on its name enough to put it in a a new yeah. Star Wars picture or something. I forget what we're it talking was about. Huge. That twist was so impactful. <laughs> and if we have Ronnie Cox in the franchise, he's already part of the world. We can have all the Cox. Get all the office Cox. And you and you yeah. you you go to Ronnie's people, you say, This is look, Ronnie, Ronnie has to understand this one is a hardcore pornographic film because it's called Office Cox. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what uh Still I'll spelled call you any visionary, but I think it was when it was Office Cop, we were more commercial. Office Cox yeah. is yeah. less commercial, but it also that one would be lower budget. George, I mean, this is kind of very out of character for you. I mean, you're known for being sexually on the But to be well, fair, Office Cox, you would have still, since we've already spent the money, you right. would have an Office Cop wearing his. His divider, his office cubicle, and yeah. then it would open up, and then one of the titular office cocks would come into the cubicle, and right. then the yeah. cubicle would close, and then so we right. couldn't, we could get away with showing mm -hmm. penetration. Well, no. Yeah, it's, it's suggested than anything right. else. Yeah. Do we have a cast for this? Do we have a lead? Who are we thinking? Uh, Ronnie Cox. Ronnie Cox, I think, is on board. He's a yeah. Yeah. Courtney yeah. Cox. Courtney Cox. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, David. David, uh, she was married to a guy. Didn't our cat? Yeah, we let him in by association. Yeah, Brian Brian Cox. Cox. by marriage. We gotta get Brian, Brian Cox. Cox. John Cox Toaston. Yeah, mm. John Riley as Dewey Cox. Yeah, Joe Cocker. Riley, we could shit. We could workshop this with John C. Riley up at the Sundance yeah. Filmmakers Lab. This is Love good. This is right. Get both the spikes on board. That's true. I, I, it's true. I, Wado, you're not wrong. I'm sexually, as Brian J. Jones's biography of me noted, my first wife, Marsha, said that I was sexually unimaginative. That's true. But this was two years before Howard the Duck came out. So who's, who's, who's yeah. word, who are you going to believe? Uh, your own the eyes? The day, the the end of the day, look, maybe you were sexually inventive. And then that was the kick in the ass right. that has since made you sexually inventive but look georgia i would say stop beating yourself up about that sex didn't need to be reinvented the movies did and that's that's what you did, that's what you did. 
Oh. We're all re we're all responsible for reinventing our own sex lives, but right. only one man could give us a hope, or even better, a new hope. Yeah, or digital projection in every theater. Surround. <laughs> yes, that as well. Yeah. I mean, non-linear digital editing system. Yeah. Uh, George, well. while we're talking while we're talking about this, do you want to tell Kevin about the stained glass? Oh, you, Kevin, you know about the stained glass at uh, Skywalker Ranch? I stained the glass when uh, you called me your son before. Hey, <laughs> hey now. Uh, yeah, I've been in that room. You've been in that room? Sure uh, have. I saw a Boash figure maquette in that room. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. That's very specific. Yeah. So the, That's uh, how you know I'm not lying. It's so specific. It's yeah. very specific. Yeah, so uh, my first wife... Uh, left me for the i was cuckolded by the man who made that stained glass then the glass is truly stained <laughs> and yet and yet it's still, <coughs> it's still there i did not take it down it's i kept it there. i kept it there yeah, look, nobody ever said that you weren't a better man than everyone oh. all they said was maybe I, a little on the tax storylines and i've, I've had i've had people i've had people more say, con -tons. that's what i remember those Tiny, tiny tauntauns. Tiny, tiny. I have had people for decades. T cubed. That's what you call the movie. T cubed. Yeah. Oh. I have had people for decades say to me, George, why don't you have someone else replace the stained glass there? You can get anyone to do it. You're a billionaire. You can do this. And I say the same thing to them every time. I say, I'm sorry. I am working on my letter to Kevin. <laughs> we'll talk about this later. Can I make a suggestion? I go back, I go back you're, in a, you're in a writer's mood. Yeah. Um, the Tauntaun, main Tauntaun, the one who's bullied like Rudolph, his yeah. name should be Yes, Yes. <gasps> yes, yes, the Tauntaun. Yes, yes, the Tauntaun. And they already, I told you to write it down for a oh, reason. I, I wrote it down and it's right. It's, let's, let's get some fan art of Yes, Yes. Guys, start working on it. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be very easy to whip up. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, yes, tells the story of a uh, uh, Tauntaun who, like, we tell this entire arc, oh. an heroic arc of yes, yes, the Tauntaun, who's kind of like the equivalent of uh, Rudolph. But then the twist at the end is the very last scene with yes, yes, is Han Solo mounts up on yes, yes, and heads out to look for Luke Skywalker and I'll see you in hell. And then mm -hmm. off he goes. And so, yes, yes, the hero of our story was but a footnote and in Empire Strikes Back as spoilers. We all know this is the Tauntaun who will get cut open to save Luke's, Luke's life. Oh, Even in death, he right. will be saying yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Now, yes. guys, we did get this from Abigail Noy, just sent this. Look at them. That's oh. that's office cop. I would just, I would turn the cubicle around. Yeah. So that you can't see into it. But excellent first draft. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Proof of concept. Interesting, yeah. interesting uh, trivia question because you can trick people if you ask which Star Wars character um, had both Han Solo and Luke Skywalker inside of them. <laughs> On screen, Tauntaun. It's yes, yes, the Tauntaun. Yes, yes, yeah. the Tauntaun. Because a lot of people, think, yeah. A double yes is, yeah, is what yeah. you. That's what is required to both slip into a Tauntaun. That's right. I mean, Ricky Barty in the chat is saying this is the new holiday special. Right now, what's uh, happening? Yes, yes, the Tauntaun. Yeah. Yes, yes, the Tauntaun. Rumble, rumble, rumble. You know, that's the, you don't even have to, because that's how they talk. Yeah, yeah. Because, because there's a little bit of Hamburglar in them. Robble, yeah, they're robble, robble, and every robble, robble, yeah. robble, 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 robble. And then you just, people are used to reading subtitles now, George, because they watch a lot of Netflix and right. detective mm -hmm. shows from Iceland. So they'll be able to follow along mm -hmm. if, if the whole thing is robble, 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 and we just write, you know, all that text on the screen. People yeah. read along, you know, uh, fucking... Uh, this is this is this is doable. We don't I, need we don't need uh, 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 what's his name? Fucking, you know. I have spoken. We don't need that forty-eight hours actor. Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. We don't need Nick Nolte. From another yeah. forty-eight hours. Story. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, look at this. Oh, look, this is from back at the Sundance Lab. I remember that. <laughs> we want to thank the good people at Stella Artois for sponsoring that lab. <laughs> Stella Artois. Stella Artois. Watto um, actually is Riley just Riley Riley commercial with Watto. We did Watto did a couple of Stella Artois commercials back really? in the early aughts. Yeah. Hey, Riley, I, think I, saw, I think I saw one of those uh, in Scotland at two in the morning. Yeah, like yeah. I was, they, 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 was mostly the market. Okay, this is what the commercial was like. <laughs> Look, he's sucking on himself. Watto is. A self sucker. <laughs> do you have a an OnlyFans account where you do that? <laughs> this is pretty much OnlyFans at this point. Mako <laughs> just gets on camera for several hours a week. People send in money. <laughs> I have to I'm admit, not. sometimes Mako stares up at the ceiling at night and goes like, "Is it any different, really?" <laughs> We should say, if you're watching the show and enjoying it, there is a donate button at the bottom that helps out the behind-the-scenes crew here at Planet Scum Live. Yes, what, do they the ask light for? On. what do they ask for on your OnlyFans? Or is it OnlyFans singular? Uh, I think it's plural, right? Do you have more than one? That's my question. If you have one, then it's just an OnlyFan. But well, that's like a sort of... One. You're asking a, a tree falls in the middle of the forest question. Uh... No, I mean, this, This, I, as I said, this has sort of become my OnlyFans. I had to drop a pastrami sandwich out the window once. Nine-story drop. No, I'm not. That's what I'm saying. These people, they come in the chat and they go, Wado, do this. Wado, do that. And I go, okay. This is 100% true it's that Wado was given $1,000 to drop for his charity. Pastrami. For charity. Well, for charity. For charity. Um, to drop his pastrami, pastrami sandwich nine stories Uh uh, to the ground. In, what, a lean cut? in New York City? Yeah. 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 You can kill listen to the sandwich it's, it's, the it's unquestionably a felony. Absolutely. Yeah. Watto was like very, very nervous about it. He lives in the Dakota building, of course. Uh, Watto lives uh, right below Yoko. And he, he dropped it. A lot of bad things yeah. have happened there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the worst, maybe. Like, maybe the worst thing that's ever happened yeah. directly outside of the Dakota. Imagine all the people walking below who could have gotten hit by that pastrami. And, this me. Yeah. and then you won't believe this, okay? Could, could be a kid standing outside waiting yeah. to see a famous person come out, get struck by that pastrami sandwich, and then that famous person loses yeah. a fan. Mm -hmm. Well, you yeah. won't... You will not believe this, okay? I, everything I'm about to say is literally true. Watto was given $1,000 towards charity to drop a lean-cut pastrami sandwich out of his nine-story window, live on camera, and then about two hours later, Robert Wool came on the live stream and said, Oh, you'll never believe what happened to me. I was walking down the street. Yeah, pastrami came and hit me straight on the head. I swear to you that happened. That's a true story. true story. It's true that Robert Wool came on the stream and said that. And it's true that Watto dropped the sandwich out the window. What did Robert Wool say about you and your forced child labor practices? <laughs> I would imagine you open with the pastrami sandwich, but then you'd yeah. say... It's a little weird that you have an a eight year old boy sweeping up for you. That guy's been working in Hollywood since the seventies. He's seen worse. Come on. <laughs> He's in Bull Durham. He yeah. saw Kevin Costner at his, his most Kevin Costnerish, so you're right. He did a movie with Nicholson. That guy is unflappable. <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna flap him by dropping a sandwich out the window. He's no seen, way. It. Yeah, He's seen it all. Wool has seen it all. He's like uh, He's like, you know how many seasons I was on that HBO show? Yeah. On it. He's you like, I was, I was thinking, I was thinking about Kevin Costner when you mentioned his Do you uh, remember that one scene from that one episode where <laughs> he Kevin, we remember the, every scene from every episode. He walked into the room and he went, Arliss? Remember that? <laughs> I don't remember. I was thinking you just mentioned Kevin Costner at his most Kevin Costner in Bull Durham. 
And then I, I thought, well, is that him at his most Kevin Costner? I started thinking through the, the various movies. And of course, I'm obviously drawn to the big sci-fi epics. So I thought about Waterworld. And then I thought about Watto and Robert Wool. And then I thought, why isn't someone making the movie Watto Wool? Watto World. Watto Wool. Wool. Robert no. Wool and Watto starring in. No, no, no. Look, wa nobody, wa Wool, Robert Wool, while I respect his career, that's the last Arliss poster left in existence. So. Yeah, we can't it took six on, weeks to arrive. We can't count on the on the wool market to show up. You know, the wool market isn't not as what it used to be. Everyone's buying polyester. So we call it Watto World. A whole mm -hmm. world full of Wattos. We've only seen one Watto. What okay, are they? Let me say this. Together? Okay, then let me tell you this. This is the poster. Okay, the poster is this. Watto. Wool. Watto world. Yeah. So like yeah. you're the two stars. Yeah. Watto, do Watto you still world, have Watto. Theme? You have a theme song that you could sing for that movie, don't you? For Watto World? Yeah. Just sing the first verse. Just sing the first You have verse. it already written. You have it already written. Oh, this feels like having a child at a party in there. I'm trying not to set, I don't mean to set you up, Watto, but I know I you know. have I, I, hold on. It starts like this. It starts there's the load. The glow guitar that sounds like that. Brian I, Adams opening of Brian Adams. Have you ever really loved a woman? And then you cut to to uh, to Watto, and he goes, "Any, Bobby." Yes. <laughs> and then the song begins. I was now, thinking of the song. That's, wow. you're, you're thinking of a different song. Oh, my bad. No, you're no, right. I'm saying Kevin. No. You're thinking of the right song. You're doing the right thing. Patrick is thinking of a different song. You're no. describing. Kevin's describing the theme from Watto World. You're talking, Patrick, about the song Watto Wonderful World. These are two I different like songs. Watto has many songs. Still, to be fair, I like Watto Wonderful World. Don't it's know a good much. Song. We'd all, love, we'd all love to hear it, Watto. We'd all love to hear it. No biology. Watto Wonderful World. You can sing Kevin's song. song that you don't have lyrics for, or you can sing the one that you already do have lyrics for. It's totally up to you. <laughs> me, 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 me. I see 3PO, R2D2. They're superstars. I'm live streaming with you. <laughs> And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. <laughs> That's good. That's good, Wado. You did it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Oh, boy. Kevin, Kevin, what? <laughs> Please call me George. Please call me George. <coughs> George. <coughs> <coughs> now, <coughs> I have to ask you how your how how your 2020 has been going because obviously uh, we're in a new digital we're in a new <coughs> world. Oh, here we are. oh, there it is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> could not be more devastating to think that audience, audiences were deprived of this in 2014. Oh, that's the best. Awesome. That oh. is the best. <coughs> oh. Um, kids, it's been about <coughs> two hours. Yeah. You're, you're it, the best. It, we've gone maybe our shortest longer, show yet. We've gone longer than any of the special editions have gone. It's true. It's true. Um, it's true. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, Kevin. You're the Kevin. best. I can't thank you enough for having me on. It's given me this opportunity. To finally meet uh, someone whose work has meant the world to me. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Likewise, likewise, Kevin. And uh, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, it's uh, this was better than what I did for those punks who made George Lucas in love. Even though I, I'm working on the letter, I will get you the re letter. But wasn't this experience better than what I did for those punks who did George Lucas in love? The trifle <laughs> I gave to them. I think you worked with them. I think you like helped them make a movie. This That's is better work. than that. That's work. This is better than that. We had a human human conversation. You don't respect me enough to work with me, but 
You I'll, do see me as a human. I will you, make. I will write Moose Howard the Duck with you. <laughs> story I, by credit. Story by credit. I have. No, I have. I have, no, I have no, few, few demands. No practical sets. No practical sets. We film it. No, uh, that's fine. Right. But then no crystal skulls either. All right, you drive a hard bargain. Have one, just one crystal skull. Just one. Nobody <laughs> wants to see a one crystal duck skull. Just a little one. Baby Yoda can be holding it. No crystal <laughs> duck skull. No baby Yoda skulls. Oh. No skulls. How about, but how about this? How about if I pitch you a line? Maybe you'll maybe you'll think differently. What if there's a character? What if there's a character who says, "Oh, skulls. Why did it have to be skulls?" <laughs> so we kind of burn it. We kind of burn it. Do you hear the registers going off? Cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching. Kevin, before you go, before you go, and I've been, been replaced by old timey registers. Go ahead. Yes. No, I, you know, I, you've been very generous with your time. You've been an excellent guest. It's been a oh, wonderful it's been episode. It's been so fun. There's, I've been sitting on this all night, but I have, I have a little gripe I need to bring up with you. No. And you waited until the end of the show while I was just about to leave. That's considerate. I don't want to sour it, but I just feel like I have to air this out because I have a long-standing question. Don't know why I expect a consideration from the guy who's like, how old are you, little boy? Come work for me for free until I... Until I didn't say work for me. I said, how much do you cost? <laughs> until strange men take you from me and take you to space. But, oh, it's cool. I'll have your mother still. <laughs> yeah, when you say it like that, it sounds bad. Yes. How anyway. I met How I Met Your Mother would be a much darker series <laughs> if it was Watto as the main character. Watto, tell us your gripe. Tell us your gripe. Yeah. Your gripe. There's just there's just one element of your movies, and I know yeah. you're a provocative filmmaker. You touch on hot button subject. You push the lines of good taste. You have all the language and the pop and the sex and the things like this, and I love all of it. Are you sure I love all Wikipedia page? Yeah. <laughs> this sounds more like Ed Burns. Ed, Ed, uh, Ed Brothers McMahon Burns than me. No, 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 no. No, I've seen Dogma. You're asking tough questions. And I like that. Well, I, <laughs> 20 years ago, I asked tough questions, but not anymore. Now I ask comfortable questions. No, there's no tougher question than what if Jane Silent Bob again? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's a tough question. You answered it. You answered it. You answered it. I was born too. I was sitting there in what the if, dark. What if, what, if Jay and Bob Bob again? what if Jay and Silent Bob again? Hmm. But the, <laughs> this is my this is my real question. There's only yeah. one thing I've ever seen in any of your movies that yeah. really rubbed me the wrong way. Uh oh. Uh oh. Snoochie Boochie. That's my uncle's name. Did you steal that? Yes. I got an Uncle Boochies. Yes. <laughs> we know him. He used to come to Highlands to go to the lobster barn. He's a huge I went to see him with him, and he's like, what's this fucking guy doing saying my name over and over again? If you let me explain, you'll know, and then you'll understand. He, okay. Gucci Boochie, would come to Highlands, the town I grew up in, all the time. Yeah. There was a store there. We're on the water. So most people make their farm the ocean. That's how they make their living. We had a place there called the Lobster Barn. And every day my father would send me to Lobster Barn. It was like one block away from our house. So you can let a kid walk there. And he'd give me a dollar and he'd say, go get a dollar's worth of fish. And I would go and to the Lobster Barn. They would measure out. They used to measure out exactly a dollar. And some, every once in a while I'd get somebody who'd make sure it was like even a dollar with the scale. So most of the time, they were like, oh, this kid's cute. And they just hunk a big chunk of fish on, which would be like a $10 hunk of fish they give me for a fucking buck. Now that I think about it, we were pretty poor. But in any event, as I was there, Snoochie Boochie would always come in for scallops. Scallop hungry. Oh, loved scallops and stuff. Mm -hmm. So while we waited, I waited for my dollars worth of fish. He was waiting for scallops. I would hear the guy who run the lobster bar and talk to him. He said, Snoochie. What are you going to do? And I chuckled, and he looked at me, not mean, like adults can be mean to a kid, but he goes, what's the funny boy? And I said, uh, Snoochie, that's a funny word, because I was like six. And he mm -hmm. said, if you think that's funny, my last name, Boochie. I said, Snoochie, Boochie. And so I went home, and I told my parents. I was like, 
I met Snoochie Boochie at the lobster bar and he talked to me. And my parents showed me a picture that was from a want ad at the, at the post office and said, is this the man who talked to you, Tiger? And I get it upset because I was like, I thought I did something wrong. And they're like, you didn't do anything wrong. You have to tell us, is Snoochie Boochie the man who talked to you at the lobster barn? And I said, y yes. My parents called the police. The feds came in and arrested Snoochie Boochie. Now, you're sitting there thinking, kid stuff, pedo? No. Illegal scallop trade. This oh my God. fucker was up to it in scallops he shouldn't have been eaten. Farmed from the sea improperly, illegal scallops. So that was his nickname in our hometown. You knew him as Snoochie Boochie. We all called him, hey, illegal scallops. And he'd be like, yeah, that. So years later, I'm, I'm writing Clerks, mm -hmm. and Jay's got to say something. And I just remembered that name from my childhood. And I was like, what are the chances I ever – I thought he was dead. Yeah. So I'd always heard he was, he was dead. He was killed upstate Rhode Island – looking for some scallops, high-end Rhode Island scallops and shit, got knocked out, some say rubbed out by the mob. But so I thought it was no harm throwing Snoochie Boochie in the movie. I didn't think Clerks would have as long a shelf life as it has. So I didn't expect to be called up on the carpet for years later by somebody who's like, that was my uncle. But small world, right? Yeah. This story yeah. confirms that because Watto does not talk about Snoochie Boochie a, a lot. He doesn't. It's He's not the black sheep of the yeah. family, which is saying a lot. Famously, the two things that I know about him are uh, that he was uh, practical, not CGI, mm -hmm. and famously did not keep kosher. No, which I mean, that's that's why we yeah. kind of disown him. The, all the shellfish is the stuff we just well, cannot buy. Scallop, scallops yeah. is shellfish, technically? I yeah. cl too close. Too close. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, all right. Kevin, thank you so much. Oh, that's the... That's the Wait, show. That's hey, the I want to. I want to help you get out. I want to help you get out, Kevin. Kevin, I'm going to say something to you right now. I told you a very real story about meeting a man's uncle, and that doesn't open up a whole new level of discourse. Yeah, hey, look, I got more questions. I don't remember my uncle. uncle. I don't know that he liked scallops that much. I did. You meet my aunt? Maybe I went with him to the lobster barn when I was a child. Perhaps I ran into you. Like, there's so I just many. Go with that, but instead, well, I Kevin, the door. Patrick, instead, hold it for one second. At, Remove yourself from the at like Guido, and then a, a quarter is pitched to a bar owner, Kevin. so that that's all my time is worth. Is this thanks Kevin, sorry for the mess, Kevin? I want to say something to you in all honesty. You can right. stay here as long as you want. I gotta you go. Can stay here for two, three Irishmen. It's now it's been you, two hours. Kevin, do you, Kevin, do you want to watch the Irishman with us? Want to watch the Irishman with us, Kevin? Because that offer is always on the table for you. It's, that's awfully long. Is it? <laughs> it's dinner long. time. It's dinner it's time. Dinner time. Is it? It's like seven thirty. Kevin, have you had yeah, dinner yet? Yeah. No, my eating window is closing in thirty minutes. Do you want to eat on camera? Or off camera. Pretty hot. Well, it depends. Is this, is this becoming OnlyFans? How much will they pay me to eat on camera? Good. I mean, really honestly, in a world so where they're paying a thousand dollars to throw food at Robert Wolf from nine stories up, I will say that. How much is it worth to watch me eat some beans and rice or a Beyond Burger with no no bun, just straight up dry? I dry know. Beyond Burger. You ever watch a fucking grown man, a man who's about to turn fifty years old, eat a dry? Mm -hmm. Beyond Burger on camera, it'll make your dick hard. Oh my god, I filmed <laughs> some, I filmed some amazing things, but that's something I've never yet captured on film. Someone it says I will watch you eat for someone says I'll watch you eat for five hundred dollars, Kevin. It's thx one one three great. That's what yeah. it is. Yes. So that's a hashtag. <laughs> or uh, not to be confused with our concept album, which we're going to release next year, which is uh, a comedy album thx one one three eight two. It's a, a mix of an homage to um, Lucas, the career of George Lucas, of course, but the majesty of Sammy Hagar led Van Halen. Yes. THX 1138 reboot. Two. No, it's, it's a reference. The joke Come was on. a reference, Patrick. Patrick, to Leave We Wait 1 2.
Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a great joke. We got it. We got three it. of us got it. Got I hate it. when I have to explain my shit to the other guy. You know, yeah, fucking producers, right? Right. Uh, well, this has been magic. Kevin, oh, yeah. it's, All right. it's, it's been so wonderful uh, finally talking to you. Man, uh, this, is, this has been everything to me. Um, I, I have stayed at Skywalker Ranch. I want to thank you. I got married at Skywalker Ranch. You had the chili. Time. You had the chili. Uh, yeah, I've had the Boba Fett chili. Now, <laughs> did you see who cooked the chili that day? No. Kevin, I was mixing up. The, I cooked the chili. I saw Kevin's here. What's he ordering? The chili? Let me make it. That was that was my trademark. No, no lie. This shit happened, let's say, I was there mixing dogma in late 98, early 99. Mm -hmm. um, I was with this woman who had become my wife. She was already pregnant with my, ch my child. Very we get married before the kid came, very close. But we ate the chili... And I swear to you, I could go get my wife if you'd like. But I says to my wife, I says, this chili was made with love. Yeah. And the tagline for Strange Magic, my last film that I made, the CGI animated jukebox musical, was everyone deserves to be loved. Wow. Yeah. You, have you seen Strange Magic, Kevin? <laughs> Kevin? That's it's the, last, it's the last feature film that I was involved in. I made yeah, it. it my, <laughs> my 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 feed seems to be breaking up. I can't. Kevin, you're Star big time of, seen it. of course, strange, seen it. strange magic. It was released oh, no. on, the, on the defunct Touchstone label as a contractual obligation as part of selling Star Wars. Disney agreed to finish my CGI animated jukebox musical about fairies who live in the woods. Yes. Uh, and they didn't want to release it as a Disney picture, so they released it as a touchstone picture, a zombie imprint that no longer no longer has any uh, staff or employees. The same year that The Force Awakens was released and, and broke box office records that for that year, George Lucas also broke some box office records with the lowest grossing CGI movie feature film to uh, ever be released on 3,000 screens. Wow. Only George Lucas would remember that, though. You gotta, you gotta take consolation, and nobody That's, remembers yeah, no, that. It's really me. You. Yeah, you don't have to carry and, that. Lay your burden down, George. Lay that cross down. You're only carrying it as far as. Is, don't. You want to go up to the top of Golgotha? Go ahead, but just don't carry that cross with you. Oh. And leave the hammer and the nails behind. I tell you what, when this plague ends, we're gonna make so many moose movies. You and me, we're gonna put moose in right. There. Moose Star Wars is going to make you rich again. So rich that you're like, I'm going to sell it all again. Yeah. May the moose be with you. <laughs> moose the force be with you. Moose the force be moose you. Yeah. yeah. You will be mo moosed. It's bemoosing. I can see all the reviews. Oh. The moose fun but you'll ever have in a mo moose v theater this year. I can't moose experience. <laughs> Not to be moosed. <laughs> I didn't mean to sound so sad when I said no, that. That, was so, that was such a heartbroken delivery. <laughs> Not to be moosed. Completely oh, defeated, thinking, George. An old man thinking to his younger days. Not to be moosed. <laughs> uh, that oh, was almost said in a rosebud whisper. That's true. I'm glad you were here to hear it. Moose Clunky, bring the noise set. Moose Clunky. Uh, moose Clunky. Oh, my God. I mean, moose Clunky. Three Chord Me said Mustafar, which is a good one. Too. <laughs> Mustafar. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Finally, we can give them what they've always wanted to see, like the fucking yeah. planet with lava and shit, but moose is on the fighting. And then the, the whole planet, the whole legs thing. cut off, and he's like, I hate you, as he burns alive. Yeah. Yeah. That was some of the most metal shit I've ever seen in my life. A burning half man screaming his hate at somebody else. That's a movie. He, well, for kids. For 2020 right there. Yeah. I don't want to be well, this late in the show, but George, you knew this year was coming. You're like the Simpsons. You called it before it happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, I... I you know, that's a terrible thing to do to a friend, though, to cut off all their limbs and leave them to, to burn to death on a lava planet. Not great. 
Yeah. It's not a great way to treat your friend. If you're especially if you're the good guy, just wander off. Just do a mercy just stab with the lightsaber, turn it on and off through the head. That's what you do. Or you just, you know, you if you're so flippy, you flip over him, you conk him on the head with the butt of your lightsaber. Yeah. You knock his ass out cold, you drag him back onto your ship. Yeah. You bring him home, you lock him in a room for a couple weeks and Top snap. Button. You know, you give him the share and moonlighting. Snap out of it. And you slap him a few times. That's right. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I don't know if I I don't know if I told you. And you just deprogram him. That's a whole different movie. You deprogram him and shit. And at the end oh. he breaks down crying. He's like, Oh, you saved me and shit. And you know. Kevin, I want to share something with you that I don't think you necessarily know, but it is canon. But I think you might enjoy it. Okay. Do you know the answer to why when you see the Force Ghosts at the end of Return of the Jedi, why Anakin is a young man, but Ben Kenobi is an old man. Why you don't see young Ben Kenobi? No, why? All right, bear with me, because this some people have heard this before, but but I think it's a like journey. It. I, think, I think you'll like this. Okay. Jedi's uh, who are not supposed to love, but if a Jedi loses his his, his or her virginity, that locks in their Force Ghost age. So Anakin, having hooked up with Padme, that locks in your Force Ghost age. Mm -hmm. He's ben one of the few to have a young force ghost. All these other ancient force ghosts, they went to the grave. Yeah. Mint yep. condition, if you get my drink. So you're thinking, it. so you're thinking Ben Kenobi. Board. Ben Bagged Ken and boarded, you know? Yeah. So you're thinking, <laughs> well, that means Ben Kenobi died a virgin. No, no. Right before we meet Ben Kenobi in episode four, and I didn't want to show this, I just wanted the barest little suggestion of it. Ben Kenobi has sex for the first time <laughs> with a Tuscan Raider. I didn't want to show it. It's too much. It's a kid's film. But he, that's why he's all worked up. <laughs> <laughs> he's in post-coital, like, he's never felt anything like that. That's what they do. That's what they, and that's also how the, the Raider loves, how yeah. the sand person loves. You, yeah. you don't just come, you're... <laughs> It's also why he wants to like get out of there right away because he he's a love him and leave him type. He but he is he is like he's he's got the the taste for it at this point. <laughs> now he's hooked. Now he's hooked. He wants as much of this as he can get. So what's yeah. his next move? Let's go to the nastiest place on this whole planet. Yeah. And he's, now he's looking for the strange. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's looking down. Like, looking now down. that I'm, how do you keep me down on the farm, boy? Once I've seen Paris. Yeah, so he's looking down and he's saying, you'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. It's like, yeah. oh boy, let me have it. And the boy, who's going to be a virgin until he dies, because we saw him as an old force ghost, yeah. he's just like, glory hole? What are you talking about? Fortune yeah. and glory? They meet a guy who's like, fortune and glory. They meet, you know, and he's like, look, here's my here's my, my pet, my friend, my yeah. furry friend. So and he's also sitting yeah. down. He's sitting down with an old man in his house, going, "Here's this, you know, this phallic object your dad left left for you before he died. Your dad left you this dick. Turn it on and fuck the galaxy with it, boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. don't make yeah. mistakes I made. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look what he saved from the guy who he left for dead on a volcano. His like giant light phallus. Yeah, he did. you'll notice through he the whole movie. He told that kid what to do, but years before. Yeah. He's cutting off legs and burning motherfuckers on the shore of a lava beach. Uh -huh. So then you'll notice through the whole movie, old Ben Kenobi, he keeps finding every excuse he can to go over here, go over there. Yeah. Anytime you don't see Ben Kenobi, he's, he's looking for a slice. Yeah, he's yeah. he's looking for some more action. I believe that. He volunteers when they're in the Death Star. Remember the recut scene where he goes to turn off the tractor beam? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the two guys are there, and he's like, have you seen the new fucking ships and he's like i hear they're quite amazing and then the yeah. scene goes on another scene where ben kenobi joins him he's like well i hear lips or hips and all of a sudden yeah. there's this big fucking you know war in someone's yeah. mouth in yeah. space. ben kenobi ben kenobi says hey you guys seen this <laughs> you seen this thing roger roger and all right you seen one of these before yeah it's yeah. just He's just oh, leaning on the tractor beam machine, yeah. just like. All the hints are there. They look over and they're like, 
what is that? And he's like, you know what this is. You ever seen you know, one? Yes. <laughs> is, this, is this tractor in you? Is this a, this beam going to tractor you? Yeah. To this beam? Yeah. So uh, anytime, and, and famously, the, the, the battle droids say Roger, Roger all the time, which, you know, we filmed those first Star Wars movies over in England, yeah. a rogering, a good rogering. That's the section. Yeah. <laughs> what do they all say? Roger, Roger, yeah. Roger, Roger. These battle droids are horny. Obi Wan uh, Kenobi, he's looking for a Roger Rogering the whole yeah, time. Yeah, but he's right. a yeah. the Death Star when they got rid of all the the, the droid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so and clones, clones are born without parts, so there's no Roger Rogering. No Roger. No, no, clone no, no, is smooth as a doll. That's why they're happy to die. Yeah. Because who wants to live with no nothing, no dick, no vagina, nothing? We have nothing. Not them. Yeah. No. No butthole. So, no butthole. So Ben Kenobi. No He's roaming around. He's roaming around the, the Death Star, and then he finally meets Darth Vader. They have their fight. Darth Vader goes to he takes his lightsaber. He goes to get him, but Obi Wan Kenobi he doesn't. He never gets hit by the lightsaber. He might know this. I, I, eagle eyed viewers right. might know this. Never makes contact with him. Instead, he just disappears. And then Darth Vader kind of stomps around in the cloak. Like, is he still yeah. there? Yeah. He's, he's like, where's his body? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you know why? He's still there. He, he's, he's he knows. Teeny, he's shrunk down teeny tiny. Oh, Obi Wan used the force to become very little. He's, like a become, he's like, you think you'll kill me, Darth, but you won't, because I'm a witch. Yeah. yeah. And and th th people might you say that the word way though, won't and will. Won't and will That's and will and way, and. People might say this is silly, but if it's so silly, why did Darth Vader stomp his high heel around on that cloak? He's not right. an idiot. Why would he waste time stomping on the cloak if it wasn't at least possible? I always read it as that is the Star Wars universe version of pissing on a dead body. When you when you stamp on the cloak with the heel of your foot, that's like the ver he can't pee anymore because he was, as we all know, oh, burned so on the shore yeah. of a lava beach with his yeah. leg and dick got burned off. Yeah. So he can't s sit there, whip it out, and piss on the body. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is what he loved to do because this is the guy that burned his fucking legs off, cut him off and burned his legs off. So instead, yeah. he just does the footstep and shit. And yeah, if you think uh, this, 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 this is a mistake. George shot, was, one, George shot, was, one shot that you cut out where they cut to the stormtroopers who were nearby and they all went like this. Oh, shit. Yeah. Because, but the thing is, he didn't realize, he thought he's in Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope. He didn't realize that he was also in any... I shrunk myself. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember that one where he shrinks and he looks up and he goes, Annie? <laughs> Do you right. want to hear the great tragedy of yeah. Star Wars Episode Four in New Hope? Tell yes. it, Walter. Tell it. Obi-Wan Kenobi is now very, very small, like a little bug. Yes. And his plan is to continue Futzing around, maybe I can sneak into the Death Star, get into the wires, <laughs> Ant Man style, shut yeah. it down that way, right? So he said, I'll help my friends. I won't blow up the Death Star, I'll just make it stop working, right? Yes. But, but the problem is, he's got a new POV now. He's down low on the ground floor, and he gets distracted from his mission. But suddenly he's got all these bug stuff. He's got He's what? seeing all these li little bugs going around. And he goes, hmm, might be good to fuck that bug. <laughs> so he becomes a bug fucker? He becomes a bug fucker. And that's why when you get to like, it make, it tracks. Because remember in the prequels, he's riding that fucking big bug looking thing. Yeah. And he's like, oh, this feels good. Yeah, he's like, this feels right. Yeah. I mean, with the motion, yeah. this ocean is, yeah. that's where I want to get wet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. So, like, uh, Obi-Wan bug, bug fucker. Mm -hmm. And Obi-Wan <laughs> dies. He doesn't die when Darth Vader slashes him with the lightsaber. He dies Luke. when the Death Star blows up because he's Luke still on the Death Star, dick yeah. deep in a lady bug. <laughs> I remember Luke was like, you know, you mean old Ben bug fucker Kenobi lives out by the Dune Sea? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> old bug fuck Kenobi. That's why. That's why uh, uh, Uncle Owen doesn't like him. Yeah, because he's a bug <laughs> guy. That's bug fucker. 
<laughs> yeah, he's like, he fucking, don't you know what that bug fucker does? He shrinks down and he fucks bugs. It's right there in the name. Now, he's been telling bug. people for years he's going to do it someday. He's <laughs> like, well, how does he get fucking big again after he shrinks down to bug size? And that's Uncle Owen says, blue milk. And Luke looks over and sees the blue milk on their counter. And that's when he realizes that Uncle Owen is just jealous of Obi-Wan Kenobi because he, too, is a bug fucker. That was another scene that George cut where Uncle Owen gives him that information and then Luke takes the glass of blue milk and looks at the camera and goes, Oh, yeah, I think I'll pass. <laughs> is that why Uncle Owen married Aunt Beru? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Aunt Beru was his beard, his oh, beard. I just felt like Aunt Beru. Because she, gave him Aunt yeah. she yeah. knew yeah. that, Aunt. like, she, she knew that she had to be the public face of their relationship. Yeah. Because yeah. word got out that my husband shrinks down to bug size and he's a bug yeah. fucker. Nobody's a any child with them in the desert. I think <laughs> what I think what Patrick is suggesting is that Uncle Owen, maybe they were meeting on some sort of primitive digital chat forum mm -hmm. and he's like, so you're really an aunt? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, can't wait that's to meet That's what I was going for. Wow. Thought it was a little bug. And then when he meets her, he's like, oh. He's like, well, you know, your, your photo, <clears throat> and she says, "I never sent you a photo." More of this two-legged, humanoid, five-foot bullshit. Yeah. No I mean, exoskeleton to be seen. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Um. All right, kids. May the I always wanted to say this to you. May the may the force be with you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Um. This has been a, a lot of fun. I will happily come back to your show. We would love it. Welcome we anytime. Love it. Everyone in the chat really loved having you here, so I'm, I'm glad Are you're you here. Are you saying, time. Kevin, that you want to come back for an episode two? Um, <laughs> yes, any episode. There you hey, go. Well, any word. episode? There you go. There you go. <laughs> well done. Oh, we love it. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for having yeah. Enjoy your beans and rice and your, uh, what kind of bur your dry beyond burger. So dry. That's how I like it. N nothing oh. lubed about it, just oh. sticking mm -hmm. in me dry. Bone dry. Mm -hmm. Like sand, it's rough and it's coarse and it gets everywhere. <laughs> um, bye everybody. Bye Kevin. Oh boy, the best. Uh, what, what, a fun the time we had. what a fun time we had with Kevin. What a show. Watto show. Bye.